They don't want to win. I guess. I guess. Hey, it was. Celebrini. I, it was, it, it's, it's, it's embraced debate. Give me, a, give me something. To tank for Celebrini. So, uh, uh, give me something. Something. I need. Something. Suck weenie for Celebrini. Suck weenie for Celebrini. That's what we've been doing all year, idiot. On today's part of my take, we have a great interview with Celtics Derek White and Peyton Pritchard. They came to the studio. Thank you to them. Awesome time with them. We also uh, are going to talk some college basketball. We have some MLB signings and some update on the uniforms. Apparently, you can see everyone's dong every year per Darren Ravel. Maybe we should call him. Yeah, he'll be our senior dick correspondent. Yeah, maybe we'll call our esports correspondent, Darren Ravel. I don't know. We're going to have a great show, and then we have a Monday reading. Monday readings are back. We have two Monday readings for the people, and it's all brought to you by our friends at DraftKings. Get in on the action with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. New customers who deposit $5 or more can get a no-sweat bet up to $1,000 back in a bonus bet. What's a no-sweat bet? It's just like getting an offensive board. Miss your first shot. You get another opportunity to score with a bonus bet back. Uh, we have also, everyone can follow our picks in the DraftKings Sportsbook. Let's see, no-sweat bet. I'm going to look real quick. I'm going to take a quick gander at Monday's college basketball. Let's take a no-sweat bet. Ooh, Okay. Um, hmm. Anything jump out? PFT. You see anything? You jump. You see anything you like? Maybe UNC. Ooh. Okay. Baylor plus two. Maybe a bounce back if that one guy who doesn't uh, just throw balls in the air in overtime. Baylor plus two tomorrow. We got some NBA action. You can also follow what all of your favorite barstool personalities are betting on by joining the barstool betting group in the social se section of the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code Take. New customers can get a no-sweat bet up to $1,000 if your first bet loses. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code TAKE. The crown is yours. Go download the DraftKings Sportsbook right now. No-sweat bet up to $1,000 back in a bonus bet if you deposit $5 or more. Uh, so go check it out right now. All I like Baylor TCU over. Okay, there we 149 go. 149 and a half. So there we go. Use that no-sweat bet. Use code TAKE. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook right now. And get involved with DraftKings Sportsbook. March coming up. It's the best. Okay, let's go. Welcome to Part of My Take, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Today is Monday, February 26th, and boys, it's happened again. We got a court storming problem. We've got some discourse when it comes to storming the court. I think that nature kind of has a way of healing itself sometimes. Mm. When fans storm the court and the fans get injured, that's I think that's good. Yeah. I think like if there should be a rule that if you're a player and a fan comes at you, you can just go hog wild on them. Free the free the free fight rule that I've had for a very long time. Let 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 the players have a free fight. But yeah, we had a a great Saturday of college hoops. Uh, we can get to some of the other games, UConn and Villanova. But the big story that captivated the country for I don't know three or four hours was Duke getting their uh, or Wake Forest storming the court on Duke. Kyle Filipowski getting maybe injured. Have we had an MRI with him yet? I, I don't think he's that injured. I haven't seen it yet, so I guess he sprained his ankle. He may or may not have sprained his ankle tripping the guy that was shoving that someone. Was storming. Yeah, he stuck his foot out. The guy went flying, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, then after the game, he just said like, "Yeah, it felt personal. It felt like they were attacking me." Yeah. And then the overhead camera. I don't know. Have we always had these overhead cameras? Like we saw that with Caitlin Clark, right? Yeah. And we, now we see it here. It, I think it's just installed strictly to review court storms it's it's strictly it's it's installed so that when a player says oh my life was threatened we can zoom in and be like no actually you were the one shoving yeah which i don't listen that was a bang bang play i don't know if i'm gonna go all the way to say that kyle filipowski was like actively trying to push someone it was a bang bang play i love court storming i'll always love court storming it's part of college basketball it's part of like it's unique to the sport and like students getting excited, college kids being idiots. I'm in for all of that because I once was a very, very dumb college student, and I don't forget that, even though those years are very long, long ago. 
But we did it storm was, a court like a year ago. Yeah, we did, and that was fun. Well, that was when Wisconsin. Awesome. That's when Wisconsin won the Big Ten. Yeah, outright share of it. The uh, yeah, Darren Ravel tried to tried to because he he uh, said that guys should it was assault and that it should be like criminally prosecuted and all these ways. Everyone came up with ways to stop court storming. So as a as a Big J journalist myself, what I did was I went back and I found all the times Darren Ravel cheered about a court storming and I just retweeted them into the timeline. Mm-hmm. And then he was like, "Didn't you do a show, Court Stormer or or Storm Chasers?" And I was mm-hmm. like, "Yeah," and it rocked. Yeah, it was awesome. It's fun, but again, when you do it, you have to be ready to deal with the consequences. Yeah, of if you course. go on the court, you might get. It's like the Harambe rules. You run, you run into the gorilla nest. You might somebody's going to get shot. The, the The big story for me, um, outside of the fact that it was just reminding me that like a ton of uh, reporters for a given sport don't like the fans and like actually look down on them, which always just baffles me. Uh, was I was just missing Coach K so much in this moment. This was a moment built for Coach K. He would have probably gone into the the Wake Forest locker room. He probably would have actually scheduled maybe a lecture on Monday at Wake Forest to teach a class at center court. Yeah, he would have he would have he would have gotten everyone off the court. He would have scolded them. He would have asked for the microphone, uh, and then he would have given us a press conference where he was you know screaming and yelling and being upset. Not screaming and yelling, being his. You know how Coach K used to... He, he gets smarmy. He, he, gets, scre- he, he, he gets, screams without yelling. He gets real disappointed. Yeah. Everybody. Like everyone... Coach K thinks everybody in the world is his son. Right. And so he gets to talk to them like that. And he would and he would make sure to avoid all questions about the actual game and losing to Wake Forest. And uh, I missed him. I missed him in this moment. John Shire tried his best to give us a Coach K impression, being like, you have to ban this forever. Mm-hmm. Uh, meanwhile, I think Duke is the one student section where like the students basically touch the players when they're inbounding a ball. Yep. Uh but I'm I, I will stay I, I wish Filipowski didn't get hurt. I hope no players get hurt. I do think you probably need to Wake Forest maybe probably should have like I think there was time on the clock when the when the players are on the or in the Yeah the, the clock on had the court. Expired, that was yeah. excessive. But other than that, like it was a false start. Figure out a way to to, you know, get I think Creighton did it perfectly where they basically just walled off the entire UConn bench when they stormed the court. Don't get rid of store, uh, court storming. Don't do that. I agree. That's the one thing that, like, everyone who's trying to, to tell you that there should not be court storming, they're fucking losers, and they probably went to, like, Syracuse or Northwestern. Uh, that's a shot at you, Jake. And don't remember what it's like to have fun in college. I actually think that what Coach K would do would be their next home game, Duke's next home game. He would lecture his fans. Yes, as an example, be like, we're better than that. We don't need to do what the Wake Forest of the world do. We expect to win here at Duke, and you're endangering yourselves and your opponents, and you're more than anything, you're selling the reputation of your school Yeah. if you do this. So he would give a big lecture to Duke that is just 100% a slap in the face to Wake Forest. And how many court stories are there in a year? Like 100? I don't know. There's a lot. Now, yeah, with, so Wake we're, Forest, we're trying to find a solution to a, a problem that doesn't really exist. Yeah, Wake, Wake Forest was, they were fast. The fans were, yeah, they were, fast. They were they on were it. Fast. They were all over it. Uh, you got to wait till the clock expires. And then I agree that the way that they walled off uh, UConn is the right way to do it. So they can, all the players can, you know, file calmly off the court. But in a situation like this, like if Filipowski intentionally tripped the person that was sprinting full speed, by the way, that takes balls to just like sprint full speed across the court. Yes. I'm okay with that. I am too, because guess what? His like, this is what happens when a uh, Caitlin Clark was a similar situation. When you take a terrible loss and then you have fans in your face, that's an emotional moment for the players too. So I, I'm not going to go be like, oh, Filipowski, like what, how could he possibly do that? Again, bang, bang, play. I just, I think he's probably fine. I, I think he might have. I think it might have been a phantom roll of an ankle. Like, oh shit, we lost, and I just shoved the guy. Possibly, ow, my ankle hurts. Like, ow, my arm. Rodney Dangerfield. Yeah, it's like if if Grayson Allen was complaining about like a bruised shin bone all the time, right? You'd be like, well, it's because you stuck your foot out, right? And did it. I it's, think it's a very smart play by him. I think where this, it's like you can change. No one's talking about the loss. Yeah, it's talking about court storm. It, it is. A, it's a heady play. It's a very Duke play. And guess what? No matter what we say, what we do. Kids are going to still rush on the court after a big win at home. Yeah. Especially on a Saturday. Correct. It's just going to happen. It's going to, and it's going to rock. And those are memories that those kids will have for the rest of their lives. They'll be like, remember that time we dummied Kyle Filipowski? Yeah. That was sick. Uh, Shout out. There's one on the record. I'm pro court storming. Ah, uh, you uh, came across. It was a that, moment in time no, 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 where no. you and Darren Ravel were lockstep in your thoughts. It was like you, Darren Ravel, Seth Davis, and, and uh, Jeff Goodman all being like, this is disgusting. I don't think False. I don't think Jake is pro court storming. I think he's like 
Yes, it happened, but were there uh, insider agitators that were telling the kids to storm the court? I am this pro is a big setup. safety. Yeah, I didn't want anyone getting hurt, students or players. You were quick to jump on the. Oh my God, this is so bad. He he got hurt. Uh, the 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 students ran at him. Yeah, I until we you saw the overhead. For, you gotta I should wait. Have you gotta yeah, wait. Of course, that's on facts. me. Storming the court with you guys in Madison was the mo one of the most fun experiences. Oh, so you are a had. hypocrite too. Yeah, no, I never said I'm anti. <laughs> I am pro. Students should have fun, but this is Wake Forest administration's fault for not having a security plan. Like you said, Creighton had a perfect plan. If Wake Forest has this plan, you have to come with the plan. Duke's coming uh, yeah, to town. I don't, so, I don't really, I so don't even. Really, the issue is Wake Forest not being good enough at basketball to believe for, that for their security I, to have well, it. They were uh, favorite too. People uh, are talking about that. Oh, here we go. They, here comes they were. <laughs> Hank. I didn't know if you were a Duke fan or a Nova fan. Um, the we'll get to that. Uh, no, Philly Hank is is like sprouting a rose petal from concrete. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't blame the, the security either because they're probably getting paid like seven bucks an hour. So pay them more? Yeah, I yeah. don't know. Like, like I'm not going to blame some dude in a yellow coat who's getting paid minimum wage right, and the, has a bunch of kids running at him. The university should have had a better plan. Sure. You were you were for a moment there very much. It was it was a group of Big J journalists who fucking suck eggs, and you were in that group. <laughs> that was a fact. You I mean you don't have, you don't release you don't yeah. release a notes app if you weren't in that yeah, group. I prematurely made a mistake. Were, I own it. I don't double down. I tough, know when I'm wrong. Jake, it it's a always tough. Twenty minutes. It's for always you. better to be right than to be first. Yeah, you're absolutely you went, right. You went uh, you. and I was first. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was actually I was right in first by saying the course storming rocks no matter what. You know what? I might be I might be anti safety. Yeah, I am no. too. I kind of yeah. am too. Yeah, Jake. Yeah. I kind of am too. Yeah. Fine. Yeah, this is listen. This I kind of am. This is what being a man is all about. You got to take chances sometimes. If yeah. You're, if you're a fan, how many times are you going to get that opportunity? If you're a Wake Forest fan, to beat Duke on your home court and then just go balls to the wall, sprinting full right. speed. Right, like in the thick of the game. Like I'm doing the bare minimum right now of being like, well, you really should wait till the times. Fuck that. Run at any time. Yeah, anti safety. I, as soon yeah. as the game feels like it's over, fucking storm the court. And you know what? I bet you if you ask that guy on Wake Forest, if he if he ended up getting injured, if he's got like a, a torn MCL or something, he would be like, yeah, it was worth it. It yeah. was worth it. I'd do it again. The the one the one Wake Forest guy who patted Philip Housey on the back and Seth Davis was like, Did you see him try to shove him? Oh, the like, second Jesus guy, yeah. Fucking My Christ, attention should have been on the second guy. I would have had more of But a... that guy didn't even like he touched him. I guess you can't touch him. Yeah, he but definitely, no, you yeah. should be able to touch him. Fuck eh. it. Mm, maybe Let's have chaos. Well, if you, <laughs> that's the thing. If you want to touch the players, they're gonna to touch you too. Yeah. That's I'm and, cool with and, that. And next thing you know, I'm very much cool. People with are either beating each other up or, or, or beating each other beating each other off. Yeah. So either way, it's gonna be fun. Either way, yeah. I just don't want court storming to ever stop. And it look and every time one of these situations pops up, it's like all these big J's just show up being like, This has to stop. These guys who are sitting in a press box who don't remember what it was like to have fun. So do it safely, fine. But keep doing it. Do it more. Agreed. It's fun. Do it harder. Listen, I would I would rather I like seeing storming a court like this way more than I like seeing that guy and his girlfriend or or wife or whatever calling Kevin Durant a bitch. Yeah. And then Kevin Durant walking over to that was the funniest clip. That was bad ever. for podcasters. They, they called him they called him a bitch and then he walked over to the woman and the woman was like, Here, shake my hand. And then they were like, Well, his her her brother died and I have a podcast. Yeah, it, it was the only thing missing was if the woman was maybe skinnier and the man was fatter, it would have been an episode of Pardon My Team. Yeah, yeah. We spent like six years calling him a bitch then being like, hey, dude, can you come on? Yeah, please come on our podcast. <laughs> we were to, well, we, that was us. We want to have him on the podcast to ask him if he is a baby a back bitch. bitch. Yeah, no, it, we don't. I, I think I've since changed my tune. He's not a baby back bitch. I just wonder. Some people are asking that. Yes. Some people have talked about And the people that we're talking about are, that's us six years ago. Right. We're talking about it. Correct. We've evolved. We've changed our stance. More facts came out. Jake. Oh. So we've updated our minds. <laughs> that was, that, and uh, I hate that I keep bringing up Ravel, but he's, he, when he, when I retweeted all his old tweets and people are like, dude, was this you? And he's like, yeah, 2021. Times have changed. <laughs> what? Times have changed. What? He's experienced personal growth <laughs> since then. New year, new him. Yeah, uh, I like th that. Works. It makes when you're like sixteen, to like twenty-five. 20, not when you're 20, forty-five to when they're trying to cancel you for like high school tweets. What? Yeah, when they're trying to cancel you yeah, for yeah, like yeah. high school tweets. Yeah, yeah. Ravel had a yeah. uh, that was in his pre-woke moment. <laughs> 2021. <laughs> 2021. Way different. 
Yeah, what rocks is that you can always blame anything that happened in 2020 or 2021, or like I had COVID. At yeah, the time. COVID time. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was a great it was a great weekend of college hoops. Feels like we're getting ready for March. Uh, big, big story in college hoops this weekend. Rick Pitino brought the white suit. Out I know, him, and he looked good, and, and they won. And, and he apparently he had to hit up a tailor and bribe a tailor to make this suit for him. Shout because, out John Fanta. He was he John Fanta got the whole story. Yeah, which that's is like. I mean, this is why John Fanta exists. It is, and this is great reporting on his part. Yeah, and, and Patino in the white suit looks fantastic. Big win. I, I wish I had known that Patino was wearing the white suit. You have to bet on the white suit. It it camouflages all the stains for Rick, and so he's out there Airfall. looking his best. Oh, our stalker did hit me up. He's like, oh, wait, what did he say? Let me read it. He he was like, this is what winners do. They <laughs> yeah, show up I mean, and win. yes. I um, I respect Rick when he's I wearing agree. The, when he's wearing the white suit. This guy doesn't understand that beat. we like. Rick Pitino. You have to like Rick Pitino. He's he's good for college basketball. Yeah, hold on. Where he texts me almost immediately after the game. It felt like it might have been just Rick from Oh yeah. You see what winners do? Go out and back it up against your friend McDermott. We had Greg McDermott on once. One time, yeah. That's what happens when you poke the bear. No co- coincidence there. Looking forward to seeing you in Chicago for the game on the 5th. So, if I'm reading this correctly, credit to us. Yeah. Credit to us for getting the best out of Rick Pitino. Yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome. We're, we're guy who keeps stalking me. The Rick Whispers. Yeah. Um, so we had another big game. Nova Yukon. What happened? So I didn't I didn't catch that one. Um I was at a bar that didn't have TVs when that game was going on and I haven't checked the scores. So. Well, good good news, PFT. It uh-huh. was dubbed a no lose. So no one lost. Okay. Yeah. But somebody had to lose. Yeah. The, the way I so the way I started shaking out as the game was was uh we were talking about, we were previewing it last week, and Danny Hurley tweeted out a Game of Thrones meme with him. Yeah. He was pissed off because they just lost to McDermott. So you felt like something big was coming from UConn, but I feel like this was a really no-lose situation for Villanova, who'd be playing like they had you know, every opportunity, no, no expectations Correct. were on Villanova. So at the very least, I expected them to keep it close within probably 10 points or so. Um, no, unfortunately, they got absolutely boat raced. Um, and... Max was very upset. I think he might still be upset. Was it a beatdown? It was a beatdown of, yeah, it was a beatdown. Well, Tristan Newton had a uh, a triple double. Uh, they were actively like they were kind of toying with Villanova at the end. They kept him in till the end, like and every time he passed the ball, he was one assist away. Every time he passed the ball, it, like the crowd would go crazy, and then finally he got it. Um, I te- I was I was behind because I I I caught some guy picking his nose very aggressively, so I had to rewind my TV. Mm-hmm. Normal stuff on a Saturday night. Uh, so I was like maybe a minute behind, and I, so I'm watching the end of the game with two minutes left, and I was like, he's not going to get this because they're going to pull everyone. <coughs> and I texted the group text, being like, well, at least no one got a triple double max. And then like right away it happened because I was behind and I was like, oh. whoops. And then Max just went nuclear, just deciding to and then Hank jumped in. Hank's a Villanova fan now. Well, if you had been they up said to they, speed on the game, you they, would have never yeah, known to say that. Yeah. I would never have known to say that. And they Hank 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 was texting being like, I ho- I fucking pray that Villanova plays the Badgers in the tournament. What what why is this a rivalry now? My the Badgers are not good, by the way. They're gonna be in the tournament. They're not good. They hurt they the minute I said I was becoming emotionally vulnerable. They stunk from that moment on, so they actually made it very easy for me. So my expectations are low. But Villanova, I don't know if they'll be in the tournament. First four out. Actually, three three quad one games still left on the schedule. First four out. So right now, if the tournament started, they would not be in. I but they got the quad according ones. according to Joe Lonar, like that doesn't mean anything. Well, I mean, he's usually pretty right. No, that is incorrect. Right now, Blake has them in the tournament, and it would be a Thanks, dis- it would be disgusting if they like. He would be very disappointed if they didn't make it. But you got to worry about the bubble. So why are you coming at me? I was I was upset. I was emotional. Yeah. So how are you feeling now? And Hank, what 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 is your are you is there a beef now? No, I was I, I was I was just with Max. He was he was in a bad place. I was trying to fire him up. I was also just trying to fire him up, you know, as a friend, and also mm-hmm. just to, just to get some spiciness in the group text. Just to get him. Actually, I just got a text from Blake. He he's listening live. He's got great ears. Uh, he has them as the uh, one of the final four into the NIT. <laughs> so no, oh, no. in the NIT. That's his NIT bracket. Max said, "I pray we play you as a twelve five pray hank said mega max lock of the millennium nova versus wisconsin <laughs> <laughs> Why, like, hank we're being boys out of nowhere hank, we're being boys. 
What what what? Uh, so that was your first Villanova game you watched, Hank? What, yeah, I'm what trying to get back into it. Was it was good. it was the the tweet I thought was a little over the top. Obviously, you know you you like that out of your coach with the uh, the Game of Thrones tweet. It was like 88% of the public money was on UConn. It seemed like a letdown spot. Yeah. It seemed like everyone was like, oh, my God, he put out this Game of Thrones tweet. They're going to kill him. And, you know, Big and East, rivalry, yeah. big spread. But Danny Hurley backs up what he said. I know, but I was just Remember thinking. He said that the, the Madison Square, he said, no, he said, you can get us now, get us now, because you won't get us later. And then he was completely correct in saying that. And I was thinking Big East basketball, it's going to be close, rivalry game. And then Villanova, I think, shot 7%. So you thought it was a letdown spot for UConn after they were coming off of a letdown. Yeah. Yeah, it but was it was a letdown letdown. after, yeah, it was a double letdown. Also, okay. shout out Game Dave to having uh, Danny Hurley shoot half-court shots, and he immediately just yelled, fuck! Yeah, I love that. Like, as loud as possible. I love that. Also, I heard a rumor that College Game Day was not allowing Max. I, I heard the same rumor. That, that they were not... They're not in the interest of. Uh, they're not interested in promoting part of my take. Yes, and so for all the people that showed up with Max has. has I got. I I got tipped signs, off. They were confiscating those signs. Yes, ESPN S is. I swear to God, Max. Max, someone, Max someone is in DM ESPN's me. pocket. Really? Someone DM me and said yeah. they brought a sign and they took it. Yep, I heard that too. So they'll let you do football game day. Yes, but they won't let. Students bring in fans fickle, to fickle basketball. Fickle well, they were yeah. trying to hire me at the time. Also, God. how do they fickle know ways. that's part of my take? Max Soto. I mean, they, everyone in that booth listens to us. Max, are they trying it's to hire up. you? Shout out, shout out, Kevin. Shout out, Kyle. Who else is in that booth? I don't know. Or in the in the truck. But ESPN it's might, probably a Joe. ESPN, what up, Joe? ESPN probably sees all the Max memes, and their next big move is to hire Max. Yeah. At ESPN. Boo. Yep. I'm Just make him a meme. So wait, Max. Uh, back to the game. <laughs> yeah. Did, did we start with the game? What? What do you, you think? We're back to the shots, game real Villanova quick. Didn't. Well, at least you're and what is it a make or miss league? Yeah. <laughs> Shooting twelve percent from three <laughs> yeah. is not gonna win you basketball yeah. games. Listen, Max is Max on was Max was sitting at, at the bar, but like you know when you stand on the bottom of your chair so you're even taller. Yeah. He was doing that yelling at the TV and I just kept looking at the bartender and being like, What? <laughs> what is going credit on to me, right Max? Now. I didn't I told you before I didn't do the, the thing I was gonna do, which is gonna be very mean because you guys were at uh, Declan's my, my uh, one of my very good friends owns the bar, and I was gonna have him go over before the game and be like, "Hey, if UConn covers, Big Cat's paying for the entire tab, just to have everyone root for UConn at the table." Didn't do that, so credit to me. Yeah, at least I wouldn't have had to pay for the tab. <laughs> and I realized uh, it, what I should do if that ever happens again is I should actually make it like shots for the entire bar. Yeah. <laughs> so the whole bar roots against Max. I would leave. <laughs> I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. That's what I thought you were saying at first when you were like, I was going to cover the tab. But no, you were just paying for Max's table. It, yeah. The, well, he was with like 10 dudes. Yeah, so I was going to just get the great, whole, all the dudes. It was a great Saturday uh, up until that. And... and then you woke up this morning, you put on your Sixers shirt, and you're like, it's going to be different today. Belt to ass. No. I mean, no, Sixers Belt suck. To, yeah, no, they, you can't even get that uh, from. So, uh, Nova, in or out? The, they're going to be, be in. in. They're f doesn't it doesn't help? They started them. the day yesterday they at first four out. They finished the day at first. They four can't. Out. They can't lose to Georgetown. That would be a quad <laughs> three or four loss. That would Correct. be very bad, Max. If they Georgetown's must win. You need a resume builder. Well, that's not. Is that a resume, resume builder? builder? No, be a resume. They, no, they, they, they have three quad one games after that. Okay, win some quad one games, Max. If we win, it's not if hard. We beat Just Georgetown go do it. and then win two of the next three. We're in. Go do it. It's not hard. Max versus Pug next week. Huge bubble game. Yeah. Seton Hall. Do it, Max. Go win some quad one games, quad yeah. two games. That's all that matters this time of year, quad one and two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, should we participate in the in the difficult discussion that's happening across Michigan regarding Tom Izzo? Yeah, it's over. You think it's over? That was a really bad loss. Tom Izzo, um, we were very early on this take, which we made, uh, I think, being sarcastic that he's overrated. Now, now it seems like the world's catching up to that take. It feels like it feels like we lost K, we lost Rory Williams, we lost Bayheim. Bayheim, by the way, getting like a Bayheim day this quick. Yeah, mm -hmm. that feels that feels weird. He's got to let a little time pass. He like he he was very upset. He got fired. Um, yeah, I think Izzo. That was a really really bad loss. Things are tough right now for Michigan State. Not, I feel I feel bad for him. If if you're Michigan State and you you have uh, Big Brother win a national championship in football, you were pointing at basketball. So yeah, you were like, well, doesn't matter. We're basketball school, and then to have this implode on him. 
But I feel like with with Izzo, are they gonna would they fire Izzo? No, they, you have to let Izzo walk on his own. You have yeah. to be like, well, we'll fire you if you don't retire. Yeah, he's he he will gracefully go away. It's not like you can. There's no retirement home for coaches. And be like, we're we're sending you to a home. Right, they look after you. Right. No, he'll yeah he'll have to. They'll they'll do it right. I have a trivia for you, PFT. Okay. Uh, here, I'm gonna list some names. Okay. Jeff Capel, uh-huh. Kenny Payne, yep. Hubert Davis, Earl Grant, Adrian Autry, Damon Stoudemire, Micah Shrewsbury, Kevin Keats, Leonard Hamilton. Okay. What are those? Guards? No, those are ACC head coaches who happen to be black. Okay. That was actually a graphic on ESPN. Interesting. ACC coaches who happen to be black. Happen, happen, to, happen, be. To, be. happen like, to be. Happen like, to be. They like, just what, stumbled upon it. What a coincidence. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that was. That's wild. <laughs> they, they, it's way better to say black, are. black, black yeah. head coaches. Black head coaches who, who happen, happen to be, to be black. Yeah, it, we're it, putting up this stat. Isn't this a weird coincidence? The, the Whoever made that graphic is so scared of language. <laughs> That they went with happens to be black. Mm-hmm. So why would you make that graphic if it's happens to be? I don't know. It was one of the weirdest things ever. I thought it was a Photoshop when I first saw it, but then I saw it everywhere. I was like, this actually was put on air. I love that. Happens to be I kind of love it. You know what I was thinking about the other day? You remember back in, when was that? Was it 2020? Maybe before? When ESPN had the guy named Robert E. Lee? Mm-hmm. Or his name was Bob Lee, Robert Lee. Yeah, Robert Lee. And he was going to announce Asian dude. Yeah, he's an Asian guy. He still calls games for them. Yeah, yeah he was going to announce a game at UVA, and they, they moved him yeah, off the assignment off. because his name was Robert Lee. Jesus. <laughs> that was, uh, we were insane for a little bit there. Didn't what? What was that? What was the DJ's guy? The DJ who ended racism? Didn't we get over this? Who was that? At the MLS? Uh, but oh our, yeah, uh, Tiesto. No, David Guetta. David, David Guetta. Guetta. Uh huh. And just shout out George Floyd. Shout out to his family. <laughs> shout out to his family. Can you play that clip? Start of that clip real quick. The uh, but yeah, happens to be black. That is, you gotta you gotta pause and be like, what am I saying with this? Yeah, they're head coaches first, and they also it's just a coincidence. They, they, they just happen to be black. They just are black, and we put them in a graphic together to show that they have. They all happen to be black together. <laughs> It's, yeah, David Guetta. He maybe they meant racism. To, maybe they meant to say happy to be black. Yeah, possibly. Or right, yeah, here's here's David Guetta ending racism. Bang! There it is. See you, racism. <laughs> now, now we party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, like that. Whoever wrote the who happens to be black, they should have just been like, dude. Someone in the truck should have been like, hey, dude, don't you remember David Guetta? Yeah. Like we we've been through this. We done. We did this. <laughs> We're good. The graphic shows that it happened to be black, but actually, I don't see color. <laughs> So who knows? Crazy. Crazy. All right. Any other college basketball? I want to see what happens to be Polish. (laughs) (laughs) Happen to be be Italian. Happen to be Italian. Uh, Anything else before we talk some other sports? And I do a quick ad. I think that was all college basketball. Houston Baylor was awesome. Well, until the the one Baylor player. (laughs) They lost the ball. They're just kids. Well, no, he missed the free throw and then he lost the ball and then he made a terrible foul. Um, Yeah, his controller got unplugged. yeah, that was that was one of those moments too. I went and saw Migration. Everyone should go see it. Uh, great kids movie, and I was watching that game and like underneath while my son was sitting on my lap watching a kids movie, being like, "This fucking asshole just <laughs> lost the ball." God damn it! I knew he was going to miss that foul shot. Oh well, he was it. like a fifty-seven percent, one hundred percent. He bricks that every single time. Yeah, um, but yeah, that was a great game. I I I bet on Houston Houston's it, really good in that game, and I got a, a future on him, so I'm just rooting for them to win no matter what. So they didn't cover. Then the brick, then the buzzer beater that wasn't. Wasn't. Yeah. What a wild ride. Yeah. To get it was the crazy. spread. It was crazy. All right. Uh, before we talk some other sports, the Chevy Silverado has commanding and unstoppable grit. We're Chevy guys. Legendary capability and dependability, too. We've all spent time, seat time, as they call it in the biz, behind the wheel of a Silverado. We're not just truck guys, we're Chevy truck guys. You know about the ZR2 family of trucks? Lifted and ready for anything right from the factory. Now Silverado is taking it all to the next level with even more Silverado truck tech. Like available Super Cruise, only Super Cruise lets you drive hands-free and tow hands-free on more than 400,000 miles of compatible roads with over 138 million miles of hands-free drive-by customers or driving-by customers. Super Cruise will help you get to your adventure, energize, and it'll help you drive home safely. Go to Chevy.com where you can check out Silverado, build your own Silverado online, and learn important details about Super Cruise. Uh, Okay, other stories. The Cubs are back. Cody Bellinger finally got uh, signed. Jake, you sent him 
the uh, list, right? Hank's list. I don't want to see it. Yeah, I said, hey, Cody, congrats on the new deal. Here is Hank's full top 10 all-time Patriots list plus honorable mentions. This list is highly confidential. Only me, you, and Hank have access to the full list. Okay, good. good. Did good, you good, reply good. to it? Good. No, not yet. All right. Okay, but, you, should, you should DM him across all platforms, though. Yeah, make like, sure he sees it. He, uh -huh. I followed him on Twitter. He has to follow back for me to DM. So this is on Instagram. Okay. Yeah. Also, shout out this woman, Lisa. I, it's just a fun little story, but there's a, a woman who lives in, a Cubs fan who lives in Arizona named Lisa L. Dubs, which great name. Uh, she said on Friday night, or Friday afternoon, I heard that they signed Bellinger just now from a good friend who's in Arizona, but can't find anything online about it. Have you heard anything? And so everyone was like, Lisa was right. And Jeff Passan actually said, like, Lisa was right. So, That's cool. Yeah. Shout out Lisa. Shout out Lisa. Good good job. Good job, Lisa. Lisa. We also have um, an update on the uniforms. People are still debating it. We're seeing more cocks. Uh, we saw like a full. Who was that? What team was it? Someone was bent over. Yeah, the, somebody was bent over and you could see. I don't know what that was. It looked like his dick was in the back. Yeah. Like his dick was inverted. If you have. Listen, if, you're, if your dick is underneath your balls and you're an MLB player and you've gotten away with it for this long, nobody knows. These pants are your worst nightmare. Yeah, it's uh, it's gotten pretty crazy. Ravel continuing to uh, to to carry water. He said, "Spoiler alert: the see-through jerseys through the pants isn't a new thing. It happens all the time on photo day." And he had ten years of the Cincinnati Reds dong showing. Okay. Spoiler alert. So he had that one on. He had that one queued up, or somebody yeah. sent it to him. Like, here's a hot tip. I don't know. He just had it ready you to know, go. What they should do? They should. They should put like a little blurred mosaic on the on the players' crotches all year long on TV. Yeah. You know, let's fucking call him because we've mentioned him so many times. Our esports reporter, Darren Ravel. Here we go. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna just ask him how many years he went back to look at penises through see through pants. He probably's not gonna pick up after last time. He's kind of a glutton for punishment. What if there's a, a game and it's raining? And someone always sends him clips of this show. How how see-through are these things going to get? Seriously. This would be a wet t-shirt contest? I don't think he's picking up. He's probably looking at... He's probably going through years and years of penises. He's Yeah, he's hitting the door. Button. I've reached Darren Ravel. Please leave your name in the... Okay. Yeah, the, I mean, step one, make the bases bigger. Step two... Make the dicks and balls more visible. Yeah. Step three, now you're the biggest sport in the world. Yeah. Watch out, NFL. You did it. You did it. Um, do we have do you guys have who's back? Do you have Flacco the Eagle? I want Yeah, to Flacco the Owl. Owl, sorry. Flacco the Owl. Owl, Eagle. Flacco the Raven. He is a fuck. Probably a brown. Yeah. Uh, happens to be a do brown. Do you want to save it for who's back the week? We could save it for We can back. save it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh should we is it time? Number four, Patriot of all time. Are we ready? What are you laughing about, Max? <laughs> happens to be a brown it was funny yeah <laughs> thank you max <laughs> uh okay ready yeah are you ready i'm ready okay we think this might be this is going to be telling because it's good reminder it's offense defense offense offense for the top top five we also, do a quick did, recap so people know where we're at uh, yeah, we have Dante Hightower in the five spot. We have Ty Law in the four spot. Wait, Wait what? No, 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 no. Six, five, six, I'm five, I'm six, five, five, six, five, six, five, six, five. Hold on, do it again. We have Dante Hightower in the six spot. We have Ty Law in the five spot. Okay. And the honorable mentions so far are The Lighthouse and Chris Long. And Bethel, Bethel Johnson. Johnson. Chris Long was not on it. I did uh, do some reflecting. I did some research. Yes. I did reach out to Chris. Uh, I apologize for my comments towards him. He is on the honorable mention list. Can we make a quote card out of that? I apologize to my comments towards Chris Long. Yeah. Hank Lockwood. Because he's, he heard what you said, and he, he asked you, he's like, keep my name out your mouth. And it dawned on me that Hank has become Florio. Hank yeah. Lockwood is doing, you're doing fan fiction. You're trying to get clicks off his name. Well, it wasn't fan fiction. It, it is a fact that uh, he did play for the Eagles the next year, and he is very good friends with Lane Johnson. But So I kind of, uh, it, but there there was reports. If, there was articles that were written that he was like, he hated that Lane Johnson said that. He disputed all of the claims that Lane Johnson made. That I kind of, you know. Memory did, hold? Yeah, memory hold. And I was just like, he's friends with Lane Johnson. He loved it when he said that. He definitely agreed. Not the case, uh, and I apologize. Also, you forget that the Lane Johnson quote was not even the Lane Johnson quote because we said I it. I heard it. We said it. He had kind of agreed with it, and ha like not really like jokey agreed with it. Then Coward said that like did a whole segment about it, and then it just became fact. It's, yeah, it's actually kind of funny that we were the start of that story, and then Hank is somehow mad at Chris Long. Yeah, 
You were sitting in the room. You got that story really wrong, eh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you take it back, Chris Long, uh, honorable mention Patriot. Yes. That's good. Uh, and then in the number four spot. Okay, wait. Two, six, and five again. Dante had Tower Six. <laughs> okay. Ty Law Five. Mm-hmm. Did you watch the other two episodes? I did watch the other two. Uh, I am a little upset. They kind of just yada yada'd uh, 2003 and 2004. Uh oh. Which the whole series is called Dynasty. The, f- the first three episodes were great. And then at the end of episode three, they were like, yeah, they won in 2003 and won in 2004. Dynasty happened. And it's like, yeah, that, that was. The, the other two are the. Or what make it a dynasty. Yes, and that was, you know, they went on a 21-game win streak. They were dominant. There was the whole, there was a lot of lore in those two seasons with the Peyton Manning and, and a lot of the playoff wins, Brady becoming, you know, a superstar that I didn't appreciate them just, like, they, basically they spent 40 minutes talking about Deflategate, five minutes, or Spygate, Spygate yeah. five minutes, basically just a quick highlight package of 0304, and I would have so liked saying them to this, reverse it. This documentary is maybe... Not off on a great foot in terms of who's I w- highlighting. I would have liked a. I want some more biased uh, direction in this documentary. I haven't it seems watched like they're making yet. a documentary for the masses, which I guess is what you're supposed to do. I was just expecting pure Patriots porn, and that expecting to be you know days and days of 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 porn and it was just they just were like yep they did they did like a a back-to-back super bowl a full episode on spygate basically and i had forgotten some of the details in spygate i need to watch do you you remember like after after the story came out that they were they were videotaping stuff illegally when mangini kind of ratted them out to the new york security um the next game that the patriots had they brought down these giant electric boxes on the sidelines that were frequency readers huh. to make sure that that uh, you didn't have Ernie Adams talking to Bill Belichick during the game. They treated it like it was it was uh, like West Germany, East Germany in the middle of the Cold War. That rules. Where they were checking into everything. And then Belichick's explanation about the Spygate stuff, he's like, yeah, you know, I had a different interpretation of what the rules were. And then they, they read the rules for him. And he was like, yeah, well, you can read it one way. We read it another way. Uh, they were just – there was a lot of cheating going on. The um, – so uh, – you know, I, I, I'm not a doctor. I just stayed at a Holiday Inn last night. I did not I have not watched yet. I'm gonna watch it. I did read a Jerry Thornton blog though, and he was like, Why was there so much time spent on Drew Bledsoe and Bill Parcells? Right. Yeah. And it's like, there yeah, that is that. weird that they would do that and not talk about winning the Super Bowls. Which my fear now, since you know, it's called Dynasty, they just glossed over Dynasty Part One, is that they're going to gloss over Dynasty Part Two oh, and no. then just talk about Belichick and Brady for like How many episodes are there? Ten. So they can't. So there's going to be a full episode on twenty eight to three. You're but they gonna, did a full episode that. leading up to the to. What the hell is this? Why do you put this on the? This, is, this is Hank Florio. Oh, oh Hank yeah. Florio. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we were watching on uh, anywhere where we're, where we have it. Rumble, YouTube. You, I mean, this is a great photo. You have to. <laughs> that you is, have to be watching. That is this you right now. Right man. now, uh, Hank Florio. That's a, that is that's a, a that fucking <laughs> nightmare <laughs> image. <laughs> You look like the shadiest lawyer of all time, man. Hank Florio. That's like that's a weed. Lawyer. <laughs> oh, that, that that actually is gonna give me nightmares. That's a, yeah, that's, that's a lawyer that specializes in like fuck. driving well stoned. Who made that? <laughs> AI Shane. Yeah, Shane just made that. Oh, oh my did that? god, Shane. No, no, I. no Hank. Uh, memes made it. Memes made it. Memes. Send that to all of us. I need that. Hank Florio. Okay. So by the way, Darren Ravel texted me back saying I don't believe you. So he's he's hip to us. Did don't I believe you that what? That I was going to actually ask him a question and not hang up on him. Okay. Which he's right. I would have hung up on him. Maybe. No, I definitely would have. I would have said, what, wh- how many cocks have you looked at to try to carry the water for Michael Rubin? And then he'd been like, uh, bang. <laughs> would have been great. We'll get him again. Uh, okay, so Hank, six and five? Dante Hightower. Yep. <laughs> Ty Law. Okay. Mm-hmm. Four. Four. Recurring guest. Oh, I think it's Gronk. Friend of the program. It's Jules. It's Gronk. Great guy. Jules. Gritty receiver. Basically oh, fought through well, seven that's... concussions against the Seahawks. Chris Hogan. Made a miraculous catch against the Falcons. Super Bowl MVP against the Rams. Wow. Julian Edelman. Wow. wow okay. Four. I think that's fair. Okay. There's going to be a lot on Julian in this documentary. I'm I mean, sure of it. two feels like more. At least three. Hank is nothing but honest with this, and I feel like, yeah, Gronk is, without Brady and Gronk together, I don't know if you get the second part of that dynasty. Mount Rushmore. He is on the Mount Rushmore. All right. As he deserves to be. And who's your honorable mention this week? 
Chris Long. Or today? Oh, Chris Long. He wasn't on it. Oh, he wasn't. All right. Mm -hmm. He was on Dishonorable Mention. Has anyone gone from Dishonorable to Honorable? No. Chris Long. Hernandez should be Dishonorable. Yeah. Yeah, you should do Dishonorable. (laughs) We haven't haven't ruled him out of the list. Oh, yeah, you're right. We still have 10 through 8. It's 8 to go. Well, he was never actually convicted. His conviction was vacated. That's true. In the eyes of the law, not a murderer. Would be cool if he was number one. Of himself. He just went purely on, uh, you know, upside. It was there. Okay, so Wednesday we'll get number three. Who's defense? Defense. Who could it be on defense? Will Fork. Will Fork, yeah. It's going to be Will. Or Brewski. Hmm. Or Vrabel. Is Hank going to have an all-white top four? Uh-oh. Oh, Oh, no. Patriots who happen to be white. Yeah, uh (laughs) uh-oh. Oh, boy. Okay, Hank. You still have time to change. Oh, no, you can't change it. Uh, All right. Should we do who's back of the week, and then we'll get to our interview? Who's back of the week's brought to you by our friends at Coors Light. From day-to-day annoyances to the big stuff life throws your way, it's easy to get worked up, but there's a better way, a chiller way. Turn that canceled concert into a parking lot dance party. Too cold for an ocean swim. Play volleyball and light a bonfire instead. That's choosing chill. And when you choose chill, reach for a Coors Light. When the mountains turn blue, it's as cold as the Rockies. When you choose to rise above it all, choose chill. Choose Coors Light. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash take. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. CoorsLight.com slash take. Go right now. It's the coldest beer. It's the best beer. It's Coors Light. We love Coors Light. Thank you to Coors Light, one of our favorite sponsors. Hank, your who's back of the week? Yeah, we got to have a conversation about this big cat because I, I don't think this. I was in New York for a long time. Bad sports sound, shitty sports teams, bad fans. I've really enjoyed my time in Chicago. It is a, a great sports sound. You can feel the energy in town around these teams. Okay, People so are Hank, excited. Uh, Let Hank me is doing his who's finish. back. Uh, he literally looked online and was like, I need something for who's back. What's the last thing that happened? No, this is a fair. This is a this is a bad sports town moment in my opinion. Okay, Patrick Kane, yeah, Red Wing, first yeah. game back against Chicago. Yeah, I was there. You were um, there. There were actually a lot of Red Wings fans there, like a lot. And the yeah. first goal was very loud. Like, all right, so I took my son. It was an incredible night. Uh, I got a little misty eyed when they d- did the Kane uh, video tribute. It was Chelios re- jersey retirement. I had to watch the Chelios jersey retirement at home because there was no chance I was getting a four and a half year old to sit through all that. We were we went to ice cream maybe eight minutes into the first period to try to to try to prolong the staying at the game. The Kane moment was incredible. It was like he's everything. He's the best American hockey player. He's fucking three cups. Like he's just showtime. Big moment after big moment. I saw the overtime goal. He scored an overtime goal and basically got a standing O. Yeah, I mean it's it's the Blackhawks are bad right now. They've they they're going for lottery balls. Well, so I also think they, there were, were they, a lot of Red Wings fans there that people don't realize because the first goal that so, might be a bad sports sound of its own. Well, yeah, it could be. Uh, the the first goal. Telling was, retirement night. The first goal. My son stood up and cheered, so he's actually a bad sports sound because he was confused because other people were cheering. He just heard the horn and was like, "That's this rocks. Yeah. Yeah. Now, were they cheering for the goal? Were they cheering for Patrick Kane? Probably, or were they Patrick cheering Kane. for the draft pick? Both. All three. I mean, Patrick Kane is like, yeah, I get it. I Sure. They're they're really bad. They're the worst team in the NHL. Patrick Kane is the best. He had double double standing ovation. He went out. Saluted, That's all fair. And went back. He, he deserves all the standing out. ovations. You know what we should do? But Kat? once the we, game starts, it's do. like that's where it's you like know, you got to, you know, that happens. But uh, a lot of we're tanking. They come back and they give him the standing O, and then once the game starts, but they we're start tanking. booing. But we're tanking. Oh, it, there, was, there was a lot of Detroit sucks chance going. What we should do is how Hank's doing like the top 10 Patriots, like the dynasty in his eyes. We should do our list of top 10 guys that played for a shitty team in your town that you rooted for the hardest when they left. Yeah, I still root for Patrick Kane. Not as much now on the Red Wings. I did last year for the Rangers. Uh, yeah, okay. Bad sports town. That's fine. I mean, Patrick Kane is like, he's the best. I don't disagree he's gonna with get that. His I just think, retired. you know, once, once the game starts, you want to win They're the so bad, though, Hank. But and they, they don't want to win. win. They don't want to win. I guess. I guess. Hey, it was. Celebrini. I, it was, it, it's, it's, it's embraced a bit. Give, give me something. It's tank for Celebrini. So, uh, uh, give me something. Something. I need something. Suck weenie for Celebrini. Suck weenie for Celebrini. That's what we've been doing all year, idiot. Suck weenie for Celebrini. It's, yeah. it's a very popular hashtag. Yeah. Dummy. It was an incredible night, though. <laughs> and we also have Box of the Year nominee. So I was lucky enough to. to my son is going to be. Very jaded because he 
was able to get take a picture with Wayne Gretzky tonight, which is crazy. His first hockey game ever. But there was a box at the game that was Wayne Gretzky, Mark Messier, John McEnroe. I was only in there for like two seconds, but Wayne Wayne Gretzky, John McEnroe, uh, Mark Messier, Kid Rock, Theo Epstein, Cindy Crawford. It might have been box of the year. It would have been Jordan too if he was supposed to be there, right? Yeah. yeah. And Jordan also released a very funny video uh, on a golf course, and he started with they played it on the jumbotron at the United Center, and he just started with "Hi, I'm Michael Jordan." It's like okay, we know, <laughs> no, we, we know, know, we know, we know, we know dude. <laughs> God, I would have been so starstruck by Kid Rock. That dude, means oh, that means Kid Rock's definitely getting fucked up in town tonight somewhere. My my wife was like, "How long were you in there?" I was like, "We actually were only in there for like ninety seconds because I got the picture with Wayne Gretzky, said hello, and but we had to leave because my son was like Kid Rock. I think he was smoking five cigars at the same time. I love that. It was so fucking smoky in there. My son was like, "I want to go home." So, uh, yeah, he's a bad. My son's a bad sports dad. He also. Kind of a, a tough moment for me when I bought uh, two hundred dollars worth of fifty fifty raffle tickets. He's like, "What do we win?" I was like, "No, that's not how it works." You win the the ability to we're just try to get to even. <laughs> that says we we yeah. If we win this, we we haven't won. Uh, but okay, I, I I understand your sentiment. You just completely forgot suck weenie for celebrating. Yeah, just I th- I think at some level, if you're if you're in Patrick a game Kane is in so overtime, good, man. I fucking love shots. that guy so much. I love him. I got misty eyed. That was my who's back was sports feelings because I was literally sitting there being like, God damn it, he rocked so hard. And it was like having a guy play for your team and being like that guy, whenever there's a, whenever you need a big moment, he always delivers. There's just no better feeling as a sports fan. I hope yeah, to experience that one it. Guy, yeah. You're just like, that guy will always show up when you need him to show up. Jules. Yeah, you're number yeah. four Patriot. Uh, okay, PFT. Uh, my who's back is Flacco the Owl. Yes. R.I.P. Kind of back. Maybe not so really back. Dead. Uh, Flacco the Owl. Died. R.I.P. Unfortunately flew into a building in New York. So if Sean McDermott needs to do like preseason pump up speech for the Bills. Yep. I think he'll do, just do a graphic on Flacco. Um, so he, he's he been uh, capturing the hearts and minds of New Yorkers for the last like two years. He's a Spanish owl. and Excuse me. Eurasian. Uh, Eurasian, yeah. Eurasian eagle owl. So he's an immigrant. He, well, yeah, he's an immigrant. And he, okay. has, he escaped the Central Park Zoo in New York when somebody cut his netting in February 2023. And then he just chilled in Central Park like like a mascot, flying around, dining on the biggest, fattest, dirtiest rats in the world. Is there a chance... How did he die? Did he leave a suicide note? How did he die? Yeah, because like it, it feels like maybe he just was sick of all these New Yorkers taking pictures of him. So I, I believe he flew into a building. Yeah, he flew into a building. Idiot. Yeah. It's a building, dude. Uh, so th- they said that there was a substantial hemorrhage under the sternum and in the back of the Oh, they did an room. autopsy on this yeah. fucker? <laughs> yeah. It's a fucking owl. Yeah, so he flew into the side of an Upper West Side building. Imagine being the window washer and you did like a great job and you're really proud and then you, you rappel down to like the next floor and then Flacco. I bet you that- love owl in the world. I bet you that apartment's probably going to go above asking now. You think so? Yeah, this yeah, is never, where Flacco- What if it crashed through the window? What if it broke the window? Yeah. Most famous New York deaths, John Lennon, Flacco the Owl. Yeah, so R.I.P. Flacco. I know everybody was really sad on on Saturday morning. So I'm not. I don't want to. I don't want to piss off the Flacco the Owl people. Very sad. I, I do love animals. Um, some of the reactions were a little crazy. Yeah. So I saw this one, and um, I couldn't tell if it was satire, but it definitely wasn't. But it sh- it was great satire if it was. Uh, this person said. Late last night, I saw the news that Flacco had passed away from a building collision. It seriously felt like I collided into a wall myself. Just completely stunned to read those words. What an unfortunate tragedy. Rip Flacco will miss you. Is it really a tragedy when an animal dies? Like, the, is uh, it a wild animal? Harambe, again. I guess. Yeah, I guess. Cecil the lion. I guess I just never was a Flacco guy, so it's like, I don't know. People love this. Lot. People love like this a, fucking hour. There's a vigil. Reason. I'm not gonna hate on people because they people should enjoy. I'm a big believer in people enjoy whatever they want to enjoy. But saying it felt like I collided into a building too. Yeah, it's a little bit much. Yeah, that was heavy. That was heavy. So apparently he didn't break any bones. This actually something's up. Oh, is it Epstein? He. It says he didn't break any bones, but he sustained massive hemorrhaging inside his body. Mm. This seems like somebody else had a hand in it. Mm. We need to check the flight logs. Where's please. Hillary? Yeah. Where's she been at? Was Flacco on the list? She'd been somewhere in the woods. 
walking around. He had this this owl probably had information that would have led to the arrest and subsequent conviction of Hillary Clinton. Yeah. Interesting. Do you think Hillary and Bill, like, late at night, like, Hillary's just like, so, what have you been doing? Uh, maybe. They had, <laughs> like, they, there's got to be an awkward silence at some point where you're just like, so, yeah, that time you said you were going on a business trip? Where was that? Yeah, or um, why did you have to put a cigar in an intern's vagina, Bill? <laughs> it's like, that, that there's got to be some really awkward moments, like, in, in their marriage where they're just sitting there, like, uh... Yeah, never mind. Yeah. I don't want to talk about no, it. No, we don't need to get into it because yeah. I, I like doing the show and I hope none of us gets killed. Oh, no, I was saying that's what they would say. Never mind. I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, um, probably because Bill doesn't want to get killed. Yeah. So I feel like, well, there was a hilarious Valentine's Day post from Hillary to Bill the other day. And it was just like my Valentine after all these years and they're like smiling at each other. You, there's no chance they love each other, right? <laughs> it's, a, it's a work relation. Zero percent chance that they're in love <laughs> with each other. But yeah, Flacco. Let's, let's Justice for Flacco. I'll... I'll I'll stand with the people who, uh, listen, it's, you know. It seems fishy, the fact that he died by flying into a window and didn't break a single bone. Yeah, and there's a lot of people in New York City, and there's a lot of people who, you know, they need to find an owl to be their life. Yeah. So I understand it. Yeah. It's no different than our sports teams. Or Harambe. Or Harambe. Harambe. Yeah. Yeah. But that was a little satire. That's murder, yeah. A little satire. It's murder, yeah. And a little satire. And shot. He was murdered. Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, huh? <laughs> Harambe was murdered. There's no question. Cold about blood. It. I feel a like gorilla. A gorilla. I feel like this <laughs> owl, this OWL, got murdered too. Yeah. I'm going to look into it. All right. My who's back. Uh, good who's back. My who's back is Cam Newton. Because yeah, big time. Holy shit. Don't fuck with Cam Newton. He was at, I think he had a seven on seven uh, tournament he was throwing. And there was a fight video that got released. And. Cam Newton somehow fought off, well, I guess not somehow because he's a fucking monster and a like beast of a human. Uh, he fought off three guys with his hat never being touched. The hat never got knocked <laughs> off. The The hat it had the tassels on it. It remained perfect. I it, it should count as you knocking Cam Newton out if you knock his hat off. Yeah. That's that's the rule. Dak Prescott could never, by the way. I would like to see, like, next rough and rowdy, Logan Paul versus Cam Newton. No yeah. punches, just try to steal his hat. Cam Newton beat the fuck out of no, him. Be, no punches. Just try to get the hat? Just try to get the hat. Can't be done. It was, it, he, there was one moment where he had a guy in a chokehold and then was just ragdolling another guy with his other arm. It's just awesome to see, like, you know, the, I don't know how this all started, they're probably talking shit about the hat. Yeah, and, the, and these guys being like, yeah, three on one, we can get Cam Newton, and Cam Newton just being like, no, you can't. Yeah, Cam Newton is first ballot, like, don't fuck with me guy. You would think, too, if you were trying to fight Cam Newton, you'd be like, you'd just have a quick second where you'd say, oh, yeah, he used to do this to NFL linebackers. Like, run them over, make them look like little boys, little boy ass play. Why would we try to fight Cam Newton? Yeah, a lot of people are saying like this might hurt any aspirations he has of a comeback. I think oh, no. it helps it. I think it helps a lot. He didn't make any business decisions during this fight. No, those three guys are just idiots for picking like, morons. Morons. Cam Newton is like six five, six six, probably two hundred fifty pounds. Don't fuck with Cam Newton. Yeah, he's a he's a shit brick house. Yeah, has he has he put out a statement on it with a weird font? I don't know. Maybe that was a fight over the font. <laughs> it it might have been. Funny. Yeah. Um, By the way, so we were talking about Flacco the owl. There's been another uh, animal that we've discussed on this show recently, the pregnant stingray, Charlotte. Oh, yes. Yeah, the dude in that. In Where where is it? Uh, it's in North Carolina. H Hendersonville, maybe? Okay. So, yeah, the dude, the dude who works there being very nervous. So Charlotte the pregnant stingray has still not given birth, which makes me think, this might be a, a publicity stunt. Or RG three. RG exactly. Like like is she really pregnant? And there was a great She could um, be body shaming. It, yeah, she might just be fat. She, she might have just gotten fat. fat. So um She's going through menopause. Add this to back the, off. Add this to the list of great black sports online headlines okay. of all time. Ex no, no, no. Sports online who happens to be black. Experts on if a shark had relations with a female stingray who is pregnant even though she hasn't seen a male stingray in eight years. Video. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great headline. Shout out Robert Little. Yep. Oh, gee. He's been on the internet for a long time. One of the best ever right headlines. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that we, need to, we need a conclusion to this. Otherwise, she's just fat. She might just be fat. She's fat. Uh, okay. Jake, finish us off. My who's back of the week is this league. We had a brawl on Friday night. Oh, yeah. Between the Heat and the Pelicans. And it was exciting. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of suspensions. Jimmy Butler. Wait, I thought you were pro safety. Oh, interesting. Hypocrite. But it sounds no like one got hurt. No one got hurt. No one got hurt. Someone could have gotten hurt. Yeah, could have. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have the same tone. Yeah, I don't think you did. can. I don't think you can celebrate this brawl. T culture, there, right, Jake? Yeah, he Just fight everyone, trip people. No, <laughs> <laughs> trip people. No, uh, I'm excited for Celtics Hank to be back. Well, you're you're gonna hear it in a minute, but yeah, yeah, um, they are really good. But yeah, it was exciting. Jimmy Butler said it's that time of year. He's starting to lock in. Since I put the heat on the hot seat on the show a month ago, they're seven and two. So good job, Jake. Starting to lock in, and uh, yeah, it was a crazy brawl. Crazy brawl. Yeah, there was a couple. Wasn't there another brawl, too? I the Flyers-Rangers think... fight rocked. Oh, yeah, that oh, was yeah. incredible. That, ro that fight was so sick. Hockey fights are yeah. just the best. There was a uh, Warriors-Hornets brawl. That's right. And then afterwards, Draymond Green was like, Mikhail Bridges can do no wrong. Whoops. Whoops. Just because <laughs> Miles Bridges. <laughs> Miles, Miles Bridges. Miles Bridges. Miles Bridges. Bridges. Mikhail Bridges. Great guy. Nova. Uh, but yeah, just because they're friend both of mine, Michigan State, Michigan guys. Yeah. Also, bonus: Who's back? The Barstool Combine. Yep. Yeah. Today, 11 a.m. Eastern time, on all platforms. Yeah. Tune in. I'm just uh, gonna be live. I am. I am solely just trying not to get hurt. That's my only goal. Yeah, I'm not gonna win. I'm not gonna come in last. I know I'm not gonna win, but I just can't get hurt because I can't. Knock on wood. I just want to feel an injury coming, and I'm very nervous about it. I want to get out of here with both Achilles tendons intact. And there's been some steps that I've taken recently where I'm like, I feel like the Achilles is about to go. Yeah, my back. I woke up and my back was all tight, and I'm like, oh no, combine. Don't get hurt. Don't get hurt. I'm knocking on wood. Don't get hurt. Ah, uh, famous last words. And how is Max not competing? He's a producer. Can we get him in? I'm producer. Can we get him in? I'm pretty sure. You know that he needs... People want to see him. No, no, no. Be. Come on. Do, can we still... Do we still have time? No, we have no more time. At least do the vertical. Ow! My maybe, back. Maybe, maybe during, oh, maybe shit. During the, maybe I during think the I'm yak. out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I, I need a replacement. Uh, can anyone replace me? No. Come on. <laughs> I'm not in this. He'll have to run it at some point. Yeah, maybe during the yak. Okay. All right. Fine. That's fine. I just need to see him compete. I, I don't think I can make it in tomorrow. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, Darren Ravel's calling me back. Should I pick up? Yes. Yeah. All right. Darren. Yes. Darren, you're live on Pardon My Take. We had a question for you as our uh, reporter, our eSports reporter slash, uh, what is he? Groin specialist. Groin specialist. How many penises did you go back and look at to find those uh, Reds penises when you posted that? Um, about four. Okay. Okay. Four penises. Yep. All right. The Mount That's Rushmore of, of baseball dogs. Yeah. Yeah. That was Darren Ravel, <laughs> esports reporter and penis expert, recurring guest. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's get to our interview. We have a great interview with Derek White and Peyton Pritchard in studio. Before we do that, PFT. Yeah. Before we get to Derek White and Peyton Pritchard, they're being brought to you by Part of My Cheesesteak. Part of My Cheesesteak is a delivery and pickup only restaurant brand that brings you craveable cheesesteaks and loaded fries. We got to try the next iteration of the menu on Friday morning. We got some great stuff coming. It was awesome. Some very exciting stuff, but they've got great cheesesteaks, buffalo chicken cheesesteaks. They got loaded fries with the uh, steak and the cheese on there. They've got everything that you need and the delicious brownie bites too. But the part of my cheesesteaks are delicious. I like to secret shop there once a month or so. Just get cheesesteak ordered, take it to my knot, make sure that everything is is nice and tidy with the cheesesteaks and the service. They are delicious. Nothing better than cheesesteak, especially in the wintertime. Order now at partofmycheesesteak.com. It's also available on Uber Eats, Grubhub, and DoorDash. Get them at the ballpark, too. We're in a lot of stadiums. Check them out. Uh, me and Memes went to the one at FedEx Field. It was delicious, right, Memes? It was a great cheesesteak, great stadium food, great sports watching food. Order now at partofmycheesesteak.com. Also available on Uber Eats, Grubhub, and DoorDash. And now, here's Derek White and Peyton Pritchard. Okay, we now welcome on two very special guests from the Boston Celtics. It is Derek White and Peyton Pritchard. First of all, thank you guys for coming by. And uh, Derek, I've met you before, and I'm happy that you're here right now because you contributed to a very embarrassing moment for me. I don't know if you even remember it, yeah. but we it was surviving Barstool, and I got eliminated in the first day, so I was staying at a hotel, and the Celtics were playing, I think you guys were in preseason? Yeah, we're playing the Knicks in the preseason. Yeah, and we got in the elevator together, and I was like, uh, I have a podcast, and my producer's a huge Celtics fan, and you just go, yeah, I know. And I was just like, <laughs> fuck, I feel like such an asshole. So uh, I think, should we credit Blake Griffin for getting you guys to listen to PMT? 
Is that who we <laughs> need to credit? Um, actually, my guy Paul over here. Okay. He was the one that sent it to me first, and uh, he's like, "You got to watch the fastest two minutes." And so I used I love to watch it. that, and then I was like, "Let me just keep watching, see what's going on." And uh, just been a fan since. So love that respect. So That's you, awesome. So you were aware of Hank and his his uh, Celtics fandom. Yeah, yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I yeah. I knew all that. I mean, Big Cat got in the elevator, but he had like headphones in. So I'm like, I don't know if I should say something. Yeah, like, I was thinking the same uh, thing. Like he's in. <laughs> I, we we kind of stood in opposite corners of the elevator, kind of just like, kind of looking at each other. Yeah. And I was like, uh, yeah. Like, so I'm a big fan, but uh, I don't know what to say. Anything. It's like I'm a big fan, but I don't know what to say. <laughs> when, yeah. when, when you see Hank on the sidelines with his feet on the wood, you know, like sitting courtside, are you like, I got to show out tonight because Hank's here? It's like when guys see Drake on the sidelines. Yeah, you always want to show out for Hank. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys know when, when you guys were in the finals, did you see Hank almost take a uh, – was that in the finals when he pump shot it? He, yeah. he did a pump fake with the ball. The ball rolled to him in the middle of the finals, and he pump faked and had the whole crowd going crazy. What game was that? Uh, What game was that? Game four or five? Four, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was a nice pump fake. He did the mellow, yeah. It would have gone in. It sounds too. like you guys Pulled don't up. really know, the, yeah. you know, the vibes that Hank's bringing to the court. I, I didn't see that one. Yeah. <laughs> we lost that game, so I don't yeah. know if it, it helped or hurt us. Yeah, that's probably hurt. Yeah. If he shot it and went in, that would have helped. Yeah, no chance. Helped, yeah, sure. Should have shot ball. it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I want to talk to you guys about something that is, I guess, everyone's talking about right now after the All Star game. Um, it was not really a game as much as it was like a lot of offense. We've figured out some ways where we can fix it. Most of them are stupid as shit and probably won't work. In your guys' head, like, is there a way that you can fix the All-Star game? Because I do have one suggestion uh, to add to it, but I want to hear you guys go first. Also, Derek, you should have been an All-Star. Facts. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. That would have fixed the All-Star game. Yeah, that would have fixed, fixed the All-Star all game. You would have tried hard. Simple as that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so what's the fix, Peyton? Do you think there is a fix, or is it just guys don't want to get injured? Mm, putting money up for, like, the winning team? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I my idea was that the the losing team had to pay the winning team. Because then it's money both ways. Because then guys would actually be upset if they lost. Like, they have to pay. Like, someone has to go and pay LeBron $500,000. Yeah, so what amount per person? I think it's 500 each. Yeah, it's got yeah. to be something big. <laughs> yeah. It would also be very funny if Adam Silver was like, you guys stay out of the gambling app, stay out of casinos. Also, if you're an all-star, you're forced to bet the other guy fund $500,000 to make our game <laughs> yeah. better. Yeah. Uh, my, my suggestion would be that the winning team, everybody on that roster for the winning team, gets like 10 tags from the NBA's main account on Instagram for the rest of the year, along with a link that will allow people to slide into your DMs more easily. Mm. Like highlight reels. You get like 10 highlight reels for the rest of the year. That's pretty good. What do you think Just about that? Just for the that? winning team? Just yeah. for the winning team, yeah. Losing team gets low light reels posted. <laughs> <laughs> Every missed shot, yeah. Whatever it takes to make it entertaining. I was Shit. thinking too, losing team can't tie their shoes for the rest of the season. Do you guys think – I mean, that would probably be an injury yeah, waiting to happen. I don't like that. Idea. Okay, all right. All right. As, long, as long as we win. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're fine with that. So we got the video right there. That's Hank on the sidelines. Uh, yeah. It's on this monitor right here. Right here. lean forward, yeah. I hate that because I was actually off of my turnover. Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry that I remember that. So you, you almost got an assist. <laughs> You're like, who's that it? fucking guy? <laughs> oh, man. That's very funny. That if you shot it and you made it, like, in Steph's face, like, that would have went crazy. Now the crowd yeah. would have went nuts. They can't kick you out if you make it, right? No. No. Cannot. If, if you miss, if you airball, they kick you yeah, right yeah. out. Yeah. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. I. So the other question I had to, to just start about the NBA right now, the thing that people talk about a lot is the scoring is crazy right now. From your guys' perspective, because uh, you've been in the league for a little bit and you obviously have been playing basketball your whole life, is it a problem or is it just everyone's so skilled – that it's like we're trying on defense, but guys are just so goddamn good. Uh, I think a, a little bit of both. Um, I mean, especially like as it goes on, like in the playoffs, like you'll see more more defense, more um, intensity on both sides. So um, especially like in the playoffs, like there is defense, but there's just so much space now, and you're giving these star players so much room with four shooters around them. Like it's really really hard to stop them or slow them down. So especially when they get in a rhythm, so it's just. With the space and everything, like the rules the way they are, um, it's kind of it's kind of impossible. But I mean, once the playoffs starts and it gets a little bit more physical, and it'll definitely slow down, and that's really mm -hmm. um, yeah a different ball game. Yeah, did you guys notice it right when you got to the NBA? Like Peyton, you played Oregon, and then you get to the NBA, and it's like, wait, everyone can make shots everywhere because it does definitely. feel like the NBA is like every guy on the bench can make shots. For sure, I, I kind of noticed it like in college. It's like I don't know if you noticed it, but like. You turn the ball over in the NBA, it's almost like a, a guarantee three ball or like to the rim. Right. In college, you might, you know, people can miss. You also have like two or three people in college you can help off of. Right. Mm -hmm. 
and you also have this no three uh like three seconds in the key right so you got a big that's just sitting there so i think it's way harder scoring in college than it is in the nba but, yeah but it's just the different rules as far as that yeah and mm -hmm. college refs also are terrible refs <laughs> i mean that's a fact they, they just call, call charges. charges everywhere yeah, <laughs> yeah they that's just true. addicted to calling charges yeah you can say it now like you're not in college yeah you can like, say yeah it. college refs pac-12 refs pretty bad yeah yeah that's why they got rid of the league they, they did yeah, well yeah. for yeah. us so we won a lot, so I didn't complain. There you go. Yeah, like you're a that. Big Ten guy now. Yeah. Yeah, you got. I mean, that's that's real basketball. That's we're playing in like the 50s. Mm -hmm. So you got to be ready for that. Did you? Uh, my Oregon question is like, you had to hate that court, right? I mean, it, it's. I hard. didn't actually notice it, but <laughs> on TV. <laughs> yeah, and TV it looks weird, but you never notice it playing. But I didn't mind it. Well, did you know? Because you played at Colorado uh, your last year, Derek. Did you notice it when you get there? You'd be like, "This is what is going on here." Uh, you don't really notice it that much, but like when we had shoot around, I was like, "What, what are we doing?" Yeah, it's, it's, it looks dirty. Yeah, it looks like somebody spilled something on yeah. it. I mean, I do. It looks like, horrible on TV. Yeah, it looks yeah. horrible on TV. I do like it when it's like you know, 10 p.m. and you got Bill Walton calling a game, and it does feel like you're taking acid with him, and you're yeah. like, "Okay, this makes sense." But <laughs> when it's like a prime time game, you're like, "I don't want to watch this. What's going on?" That's true. Yeah, Derek. When you went to Colorado, uh, were you did altitude affect your shot at all? Because I'm all, I'm always thinking about altitude in terms of football, right? You always talk about the altitude games going to Denver, but it, it's got to make a difference in basketball, right? Um, I don't know about the shot. Um, I mean, I'm from Colorado, so I never really knew the difference. But yeah, like, when people would come in and like they can't breathe, like that definitely is real. But I don't know if it really affects the shot. Um, maybe I don't know. I never really thought about that. The less wind resistance. Yeah, it might just a little bit. For a guy like me, I'm money down at sea level. You yeah. see that, but if I go to you Colorado, go to you might be able to dunk. You might be better. Oh, good point, Peyton. So we've got uh, we've got a, a member of the podcast, Hank, that thinks that he's going to be able to be he's going to be able to dunk by the end of the year, the calendar year. He's about five inches away from the rim right now, and he's just going to train like hell, just work out the legs, mm. build up some beef in the quads, the hamstrings, and so I guess you got to get what like eight inches above the rim to be able to dunk. Do you think he can do it? How old were you guys when you first dunked? Good That's, question. I was late, um, probably like 16. Okay. 15. 15, 16. And 15, what, what 16. changed where you like couldn't dunk before and then what'd you work on to be able to? I think the answer is genetics. I just go got ahead. above the rim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. That's, yeah, that, that's, yeah. that's pretty much it. Yeah. I got to ask about the hat raises. too. Save the bees. Uh, the, I, I just saw the hat in my house. I like the colorway. Okay. It fit the outfit at the time. So I just went with it. Okay. You're not a bee guy. Nah, I don't even know what the hat's for. Okay. <laughs> That's a perfect hat. Fuck them bees. Yeah. All right, I got a tough question. Um, on a scale of one to ten, how awkward is it, uh, Coach Missoula's obsession with the movie The Town? How often does he bring it up? He doesn't really bring that it up with us that often. Okay. But I think it's a media thing. Yeah. He never is like this. Is like we're you know you going into like a game seven. You're like we're robbing a bank, boys. It's no big deal. We've done this a million times. We've only seen one clip. Yeah, he showed one clip of it one time. But <laughs> the whose car are we taking? No, no, was, uh, no. That is his favorite line though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was the note. Yeah, the note. The car. The they left the note on the car. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Other than that. He, doesn't really, he does wear that shirt a lot. Whose car are we taking? And, yeah, yeah. It's definitely his favorite show or movie, but yeah, it you is don't hear about it as much as the media. Does. It is probably yeah. a media obsession because the other one was that he uh, does. What does he do? Taekwondo? No jujitsu. Jiu -jitsu. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he got choked out, or he was trying to yeah. choke the guy out. Yeah, and yeah, I think there was a, a, a story about how he got he, the story about his jujitsu coach flying out like every time that he needed him was nuts. But I guess, I mean, he's a tough coach. Like, do you guys, when when you guys, like, when he took over the job, were you like, this guy's played, he's a tough coach. Like, do you like playing for a guy like that? I mean, he definitely expects, like, I enjoy it because he expects you to play hard. Yeah. Like he, you know, sometimes I feel like in coaches in the NBA, they, they get in the NBA mode of, like, the season's long and stuff. He doesn't really care, like, back-to-back -back or anything. Like, he's trying to win every game. And you can feel his passion towards it so i really respect that out of him mm -hmm. yeah was there a moment for for each of you guys where you realized that you could play in the league where we could yeah yeah, yeah. Like, like like growing up like right no i after you get drafted right after you enter the nba um i assume that everything's a little bit new there's some uncertainty there right because you haven't played against this level of competition yet maybe in the back of your mind unless maybe you're supremely confident in your own abilities but i would assume that there's like something in everybody that's like i don't know let, let's see if we can do this and then there might be a moment where it clicks and you're like, oh, yeah, I belong here. Yeah, definitely. Um, 
I mean, my first year I was basically in the G League the whole time. And um, like when I did play uh, in the NBA, which is like garbage minutes, like here and there. So um, it's kind of like in the back of your mind, like, do I really belong here? Mm-hmm. Like, especially a kid like, like I was D2, like the D1, like late. Like some people, like they come to the league, like, yeah, this is what I've been destined to do or not. And so um, it definitely was a time I was like, do I, be- do I really belong here? And then uh, probably like the playoffs, like I had a good first round. And then I was like, oh, yeah, I'll be here for a little bit. And, and that kind of just clicked from there. Yeah. Did you have one, Peyton? Or you're like, yeah, I belong here? Mm. Probably like right when I got to the Celtics, is playing against the guys preseason and stuff because I played right away. Yeah, I kind of thought. That. Yeah, because yeah. Derek, you had the famous pop quote when you came when you got drafted by the Spurs, and I, I think the story goes that you played well in your first preseason game, and then someone asked what your role was going to be, and he said, "Get towels and water." Yeah, <laughs> that, that's gotta <laughs> hurt. Yeah, yeah. I, and I, I was like, I thought I played pretty well. Like maybe I'll find some minutes here and there, and. <laughs> Yeah, and then I, I saw that I was like, oh, this is this is gonna be interesting. <laughs> Way different from anything I've ever experienced in my life before. But. Do, do you think that was good that like he? Because it feels like Pop is a guy who like he doesn't want to throw you into the fire. Yeah. I would assume that would be a good thing for a rookie who's like, I don't know, you know, what's going on here. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Like we had Dejounte, Patty, uh, Patty Mills, Tony Parker, Mono Ginobili, Danny Green. Like there's all these guys that have done so much in the league before me. So like he's not gonna just throw you out there if you're not ready and. Uh, I mean, I was just trusted it because the Spurs has had so much success developing players, and so um, I knew that I was going to be sent to the G League eventually and just try to embrace it and, and make the most out of it. Yeah. Did you ever interact with Kirk Goldsberry? Do you know him? No, he, I know it is, but. He was like the vice president of, of being a nerd. Yeah, he's for the chief Spurs. nerd. Chief nerd. He, yeah. I like he, his numbers. Yeah, yeah. 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 He, like he does numbers? the graphs, so, yeah. Yeah, so what do you guys think about that, about like basketball analytics? Do people, does a nerd ever come up to you and like whisper in your ear like, hey, this is your corner. You need to shoot more from over here, or like this is you should change your game in this way. Uh, not necessarily. Like well, these are what you, like you know where you like to shoot from, so you don't really need someone to tell you. But I wouldn't say someone's like maybe you like break down the numbers, like oh you shoot this much from the corner and or what percentage. So like they don't really come up to you saying that like that where they want to get in your head and whatnot. So yeah. But you know, like where you want, where you want to be at, and where you're comfortable at, and and so you just try to get to there. Yeah, I've heard a lot of stories about San Antonio about how uh, Pop's a big wine guy. He loves wine. He'll go out take people out for the most expensive bottles that you'll ever find. Did he ever take you out for dinner? Or like, were you part of a team dinner where he just opens up the wallet and drops twenty bottles of wine on the table? Yeah, all the time. Um, like especially like if we stay in the city after a game. Like it's a team dinner and um, all the wine and. Like, one time I was like, uh, my rookie year, I was like, no, I don't want to drink anything, like, trying to be a good guy. And mm-hmm. he was like, oh, come on. Like, you're going to have a glass of wine with us. Like, this is part of the g- the gig. And I was like, all right. And then ever since then, like, I just started getting more into wine. And, like, if I have a question about wine, like, I'll call Pop. And he'd be like, no, don't drink that. Drink this. And so he, he's big into wine. That's yeah. awesome. I know yeah. a lot of NBA players have gotten into wine recently. Is that is that something that you found is, like, more and more popular over the years? Yeah. I think it's really the, the big thing. I mean. Especially after a game, it's just nice to have a glass of wine. And yeah, just kind of relax. They should let players in the All Star game drink wine during. I mean, the game. LeBron was probably he's probably wine. drunk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Peyton, when you were at Oregon, uh, a lot of guys, obviously in the NBA now, like they don't stay for all four years. Did you sense it from the fans that they were like, "All right, this guy's been here for too long"? Because I I looked up my old tweet and I had one that I was said, "Is this Peyton Pritchard's last year? I swear he's like twenty eight years old and has been playing <laughs> for the Ducks for a decade. Get him off my TV." <laughs> Yeah, I mean, my bad. I feel like it, it felt like that because I just I started as a freshman. Right, that's the, yeah. Yeah, so like, and we were went to the Final Four that year too, so I feel like it's like a it's like a good thing people think of because it means you're probably winning and you're on like the big games a lot, but I don't know. Yeah, definitely. I felt like I was there forever. I noticed that you changed up your shoe game recently because I think the first time we saw you play meaningful minutes for the Celtics, we were like, why is he wearing black shoes all the time? Black shoes are actually, slow. I, I seen that, <laughs> but they actually weren't uh, black. They were like dark green but the problem was is like i had a couple of good games in them yeah ah so i'm like that's all it takes they are yeah. slow though you they, admit yeah, right? look slow yeah. as my fuck. dad used to always say that yeah <laughs> black shoes yeah. look slow yeah sure yeah <laughs> uh i only wear white ones now really but yeah i noticed that i think we we talked about that on the show we're like i like where peyton's going with his career because he's <laughs> he's not wearing those clunky ass black shoes anymore yeah, yeah no, like I, running I, through I, cement. yeah I, I switched them up this is the high level Smart. analysis you get on this show. Yeah, you can like listen to shoes. listen listen to JJ Reddick talk about like off ball defense all you want. We're going to talk about how slow you look when you wear dark colored yeah. shoes on this. Yeah, and show. you got way better when you started wearing white shoes. Facts. True. Yeah, 
Speaking of which, the details, the important basketball details that we always get into in the show. Um, Derek, why did you decide to cut your hair? <laughs> um, well, I, I told my, my boy, like, Christmas of that year, I was like, after the year, I'm I'm doing it. And then um, like after the after we lost, like, I was just sitting there kind of just depressed and, and it was just like, cut it. And then it just happened and just been rocking the the bald gang forever now yeah mm-hmm. yeah it's a good look it is a good look yeah some some people hang on way too long and then you're like ah, probably should have done that a couple of years ago i'm talking about myself right now but i just wear a hat so i respect the fact that you it, you're like belichick cut it one year too early instead of one year too late right yeah i mean i i, I rock a hat all the time so they didn't really change much like really just on the basketball courts really people notice it so yeah it's just who's the one team that you guys like to beat the most Ooh, good question <laughs> Um, Does it rhyme with you say Philly, Philadelphia? <laughs> <laughs> uh, winning in Philly is fun. Yeah, um, yeah, you guys do it a lot. Like a, a, a lot. That, that yeah. rivalry you can feel it is like yeah. just different going into the, into that building or when they're playing us in Boston. So, yeah, do you think it is a rivalry? Because at some point they would have to win, right, to make it a true rivalry. It's a fun game. So. Wait, were you guys <laughs> were you guys <laughs> on, you were you guys on the Celtics when the when the Sixers hit the cannons too early? No. no, that was. No. I mean, that was all. Th- time. That was Philly that did that. Yeah, Philly oh, that's hit the crazy. cannons and then they lost in overtime. Yeah, I, that I, happened. I heard about you got that. second yeah. place and they celebrated <laughs> yeah. it. That's wild. Yeah, in a playoff game. I can't believe that. That was that was pretty bad. That's embarrassing. Yeah. That was really bad. How uh, how good is Jason Tatum? When you watch, do you ever like? Are you on the court ever kind of zoning out, being like, "Damn, he's good," because you you know like maybe you're like, "Oh shit, I wasn't paying attention to that possession," so I was just watching him just be awesome. I mean, he's phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, at his size, the way he can dribble and move and and being able to uh, hit threes and and get to the hoop, it's, I mean, he's one of a kind. Yeah. So. Yeah. Off that question, so you guys obviously like you have Jason Tatum, you have Jalen Brown, they're kind of the stars on your team. It what? How do you stay like in rhythm if you're not shooting for a, an extended stretch? Because that like we've had this debate with people before that sometimes. The NBA turns into like one on one where a guy's just going off, and you're like, "They're everyone else has to stay in rhythm somehow." How do you do that? Yeah, I think that's like a very underrated skill. Yeah, especially if you don't touch the ball a lot. Yeah. Um, but I think especially this year, like we're doing a good job with like everybody's involved. Um, it's not just JT or JB. Um, I mean, we got a lot of weapons, so everybody's involved. We each got the freedom to to attack and do whatever we need to do. So, um. But yeah, it's definitely an underrated skill of just being ready. You know, whenever they fi- like, you finally get the ball, or the ball comes to you. Like the, the ball might come not come to you for ten possessions in a row, but you still gotta compete defensively and then be ready to to knock it down or make a play. So it's definitely one of the the tougher skills that nobody really talks about. That um, it's hard to stay in rhythm, especially if people have had the ball in their hands their entire life. Right. So, uh, it's definitely an adjustment, but. Especially this year, I think we're doing a good job just keeping everybody involved and everybody just feels like uh, they're a part of the offense. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it is – it it definitely, like, no one really talks about it or no one really, like, compliments guys who are able to be just in rhythm even though they haven't been part of the offense for a couple of possessions. And you're right. I didn't even think about the part that, like, you guys were obviously incredible basketball players your whole life, and then you get to the NBA and it's like – Wait, I was the one who was taking all the shots. I had fifty yeah. ball screens at work. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, now it's somebody else. Like Yeah. Um last year in the playoffs, you guys obviously were in the Eastern Conference final. Didn't go well. I'm not gonna bring up painful memories. Uh, but I had two questions about that series. One, our boss Dave Portnoy tried to take credit for uh putting together a team dinner. Do you guys know that he put together a team dinner in Miami when you I think you were down three oh? Did you know he did that? That was I didn't know that was him. I oh, okay, so it looks like you, that, no uh, credit given. Yeah, where at the, in Miami? We went to the that little sushi place where we sat up top. He was. I didn't think uh, that was for but after game three though. It might have been game four after game four, but he basically was like, if they win this series, it's uh, all because of me. That was before game five, maybe. Yeah, or before what game six. Before game huh? six, Komodo. Komodo. Oh yeah, yes, yeah, so he knows those guys. So yeah, did you know that he was the one who hooked that up? I did not know. Okay, it was good and a lot of food. Okay, all right. So he, yeah, he was walking around being like, when they come back, it's all on the start of the championship DVD. So that's what yeah, he, he that was and top golf. Yeah, to, oh, yeah, top golf. Oh, top golf. Yeah, <laughs> top golf brought you back. And then the other one, uh, about that. Yeah. Our, our, uh, when Derek, when you hit the game winner in game six, which was incredible. I first of all, t- walk me through how like that happened because it was 
like off of a rebound, no time left. Like yeah. did you just it was just all instinct, I'd assume. Uh yeah, pretty much. I mean, I was taking it out and I remember there was like two seconds or however much they added on. Um so I was like, we got a lot of time. So like I was expecting like someone to take a dribble or something, but when I mean, we talked about in training camp, like end of game offense or rebounds are huge and so um the shot went up and I just was like we might as well crash and it bounced right to me and then yeah that's just instincts and um I mean I felt pretty confident I got it off but you kind of just sitting there waiting and uh, I feel like that five seconds was like five hours and yeah mm-hmm. it was it was great it was I I bet you there was a lot of dads across America were like see that's why you offense that's why you crash yeah. the boards that's why you follow your shot like yeah. that was you were you were you were uh everyone's like favorite player that night and then the other thing in this shot um, our producer Max, we have a video up. So he is a diehard Sixers fan. He hates the Celtics. He hates Hank. He hates pretty much everyone, and all he does is lose. So this is this his is replay of what he's rooting so hard for the the Heat in this game. This is his replay of watching your shot go in. So go ahead, play it. And no one asked him to take the video. No one yeah, asked him to take the video. He was just like, "I'm going to film myself." Uh, I was at, I was had a couple beverages. I think it was Memorial Day weekend. <laughs> yeah, your cheeks are yeah. sweating. Yeah. yeah, it was hot. No way. <laughs> and he got kissed by his boy Yeah So that wasn't just a buzzer beater against Miami That was against the entire city of Philadelphia too That was yeah. against you That was him You crushed You ruined his Labor Day Yeah no I wanted you guys to lose for sure <laughs> That's what it is Yeah that's what sports does It brings us all together And get best. kissed by your boys In the middle of the Max do you have any questions for them Because you hate the Celtics so much <laughs> I don't know okay. Like what's it like I mean you gotta hate Sixers fans more than anyone right uh, they beat you all the time. Don't even give me yeah, that. I That's hate awesome. You, but yeah. uh, it is definitely a different atmosphere in Philly. But yeah, I want to say I hate them. It's, it's fun. Yeah, I, like I said earlier, it's definitely fun playing there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you guys just beat the shit out of us all the time. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Hank, what do you got? You got Hank is a diehard Celtics fan. He actually like now that uh, the Patriots stopped winning Super Bowls. I think the Celtics are his number one easily. Yeah, I mean yeah. for for a while. I feel like the it's you know same core team. Uh, the biggest unexpected storyline for me has been like Porzingis and Jalen Brown and how tight they are. I feel like they're like a buddy cop friendship, which I, no one really expected. Is it like that? Like were you guys surprised at like how tight they are and like do they act like they're like you know brothers in the locker room and stuff? I mean, I feel like I wasn't surprised. I mean, they they do live in the same apartment building. Yeah, uh, but no, they're. JB and, and KP have wrote like just easy going and like get along with everybody, great personality. So once I met KP, I, he was going to be a great fit to the locker room because he is a, just a good dude. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, they're always weapon. nice to each other. So yeah. I mean, you got no choice but to become friends and, mm-hmm. and they were just playing well together. So um, KP makes life easier for everybody. So yeah, yeah. for sure. D- does KP do things in practice sometimes where you're like, holy shit, that dude still got some incredible athleticism? Uh, we don't, I mean, in the games, but practices, we don't really, like, do live stuff or anything that was, like that. That's a bad question, Pete. Bad question. Yeah. <laughs> bad question. But really, he is 7'4 and yeah, can so, shoot from anywhere. In, in and games, it's, it's just like I definitely wouldn't ask that Unless he gets a switch, you're like. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like his body was just, they just kind of put him in uh, in suspension last year where he was, like, on ice for a year playing with the Wizards. And then they're like, okay, now we're going to, now he's fully healthy, ready to go. Yeah, he, he actually had a great year. great year last year. He killed yeah. us last year. Yeah. Yeah, um, Hank. Also, he he just told us before we started taping this that if you guys don't win the title this year, he's gonna shave his uh, face into a soul patch. Yeah, never so said that. He's like all in, all in. Didn't you say that? Nope. You want to say it right now? No. For hey. for the guys right here, you believe in the Celtics, don't you? Yeah. yeah. You don't believe in us? Yeah. yeah you much, don't believe how in much them? You believe in us? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you don't believe in them? I believe I believe in you guys. So then you would do it if you believed in them. Yeah, I believe in you guys. <laughs> oh, what about what about Hank? <laughs> you can follow Derek's lead, and if the uh, if the Celtics win the championship, you shave your head. Oh, 
I'll do that. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Good. We'll we got that. it. We got it. And Thanks. if they don't, soul patch. Shave, yeah, I'll shave my head when we win. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. When do you they have, win. Do you have any other crack? No, it's it's, it's, it's we. It's we. Yeah. yeah is All it we? Yeah, I've, you, uh, I've wondered about that. Like with diehard fans, can they say we? For sure. It's the city. Yeah. 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 You put They're so all much part heart of it. and soul into it. Yeah. Do you get mad though when, because what I do is I say we when the, when it's going well and then when it's bad, I'm like they. Yeah, that's not uh, either right or. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the other, or my other question was was Jeff Van Gundy, because he obviously like just, you know, came in late. Is he, does he work with the players or does he like work with the coaching staff? Because it's, it's not a coaching role. I don't really know what, he, what his role is. I just know it's like, yeah, Jeff Van Gundy's a Celtics staffer, but what does that mean? Yeah, he's mostly with the coaches. Mm-hmm. Um, um, but like he's just around practices, and um, if anybody has anything, they can go to him. And just, he's a, he has a great basketball mind, and so just adding him has been I think great. But I think he's he's mostly with the coaches staff. How many do, does Brad Stevens ever draw plays for you guys, or is he just obviously you know he's in management? But does he ever come down and is like, hey, try this? Uh, not that I've seen, but I'm sure him and Joe talk. Yeah, Brad, because I played with Brad for my rookie year, so. He's definitely really smart in that aspect of like the game and like the plays and all that. Like, Brad is a genius. Yeah. Did it when you guys like would go on a losing streak or anything? Would you ever just be like, Indiana would pay me one hundred fifty million dollars right now if I went back to college? <laughs> you think yeah. they would? Y- yeah. 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 They yeah, definitely yeah. would. Desperately. <laughs> he never he holds that over you guys. Like I I can be I can be living in Indiana one hundred fifty <laughs> mil no problem. No, I think he enjoys it in Boston. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's got a, a pretty nice life, I would yeah. say. I, I Like, that's the Indiana basketball. They just – he is the guy that they just put out there. They're like, Brad Stevens will just come and save everything. It's like, I don't think he's leaving. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't see it happening. Yeah. yeah, I think being in the front office would be an awesome gig. Yeah. You just watch basketball, and you're like, here's what I would do different. Especially for a good team. Yeah. You'd be like, yeah, see, we're One good. One minor tweak, and I think I could solve this. <laughs> yeah. What are, the, what are the differences in coaching style between Brad – Ime and Joe. Oh, good question. I guess that's only for me. Yeah. Uh. Hmm. We do FMK for those three, if that's easier. <laughs> Brad. Is, uh, <laughs> I mean, there's there's definitely similarities to uh, all three of them. Uh-huh. Um. Brad is, I would say, a little bit more laid back. Obviously, really smart. Um. Ime was more tense would you say like he's like i don't know compared to you joe. guys got an edge when when Ime took over it felt like especially defensively yeah i i think definitely did i think uh joe's like a balance between the two of them uh, like he was he worked under brad so i think he took a lot of that stuff and then and joe was already like you know kind of like a psycho in a way like he's very like mentally locked in and like, yeah he expects that a lot, so it's like he has that part of like Emay in him too. So he has like a little bit of both. Yeah, I mean, I would expect you to be pretty like locked in and you know going aggressive when you have the town just playing on loop in your brain. <laughs> for sure, for sure. <laughs> I, the more I think about that, the more I, I like that strategy where it's like I'm gonna tell the media something just ridiculous yeah. about myself. Yeah, we fell then, for it, and then that's all the idiots in the press room ask about. It's yeah. like talk to me more about the town. Yeah, we fell for <laughs> and it. And meanwhile, they're not asking about the anything town else. A lot, <laughs> he does. Yeah, yeah. When, when you guys saw Ime, uh having a little back and forth with LeBron, were you like, I'm not surprised at all? No, not at all. Because uh, I knew he didn't like LeBron. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I believe that LeBron would have. I think he may might have beaten him up if he if they let them fight head to head. Yeah, it feels like it feels like he may is a pretty tough dude. It'd be interesting. Huh? Yeah, I'd pay to watch. Maybe rough and rowdy. Mm-hmm. Maybe we'll get it going. Rough and rowdy. That'd be good. Uh, speaking of the town, what are you guys' favorite Boston movies? Mm. Ted. 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 Okay. Ooh, that's a wild like, card. I kind of like Goodwill Hunting. That's oh, a yeah? classic. Yeah, that's a classic. It's not about, your fault. How, how about the apples? Yeah. Uh huh. I, like I just go see about a girl. Yeah. Yeah. Very a lot of classic lines of that one. Uh-huh. I went on my first date to Goodwill Hunting. Didn't go well. It didn't. No, it's got a bad, bad connotation in my head. Yeah. Oh, damn. The girl broke up with me at the ice skating rink right after the movie was over. It oh, was tough. Shit. So you never watched it again? I never watched it again. I should go back and see it, but it would bring up a lot of painful memories. But jokes on her because I dated like all her friends afterwards. Nice to so get back at her. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah, it is <laughs> awesome Good for you. Thank you. <laughs> I touched boobs when I watched Waterboy in the theaters. That was pretty cool. That is cool. Yeah. 
I first time to do with it. Yeah, I don't know if it was the first time, but it was definitely Congrats. awesome. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Congrats. It was awesome. That movie, I didn't watch much of that movie. It's a funny movie though. A big moment. Yeah, I, yeah, I got yeah. An, I got another serious basketball question for you. Um, how far in advance do you pick out your outfits for the tunnel walks? Ooh, P P probably does them more than me. It's a, like thirty minutes before I head out. Yeah, more of a sweatpants kind of. Yeah. Chill. Right. Yeah, and we'll we'll edit this part out if the answer is not correct. But when you were wearing that boy dad sweatshirt, that was not because you're a boy dad. That was because you listen to the podcast. Um, I am a boy dad. Okay. Um, so I just had my second son, and so uh, my wife bought it for me, and I was like, after. But after he's and also, but it's also a little sass. Yeah. You love little sass. Uh, I, I I did not. I actually didn't know it was Barstool. Okay. <laughs> but but now you love little sass. Now you, and love you wish sass. you had found out about him <laughs> earlier. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Should have. Do yeah. my research before wearing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I am a fan now. Yeah, okay, that's love good. That. It's a good, good shirt. That's good, huge. Good answer. Right, so the the like stretch run. You guys obviously were taping this in in February. Like, how is the stretch run in the NBA when you're get when you know you're a really good team? You guys are the one seed. You know you have the playoffs. Like, is it hard to keep focus down this stretch where it's like we're we're going to be playing meaningful basketball for a very long time, and like these games in the middle of March, do they do they kind of drag sometimes? I mean, I think the one difference about the this team this year that I noticed is, like, everybody really, like, loves basketball. So every day, like, when she said, like, everybody's, like, kind of excited to play. And, like, it doesn't matter if it's really a back-to-back or, you know, we've had, like, five games or seven nights. Like, people are, like, motivated. So. Yeah. yeah. I said the toughest stretch in the NBA is probably, like, the week or two before All-Star break. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not halfway. Like, we've, we've played majority of our games. And so, you know, you're just tired and. You know, people got their vacations booked like they're looking forward to get to the sun and um so i feel like that's the toughest stretch and then i mean after this now we're just trying to prepare for the playoffs and make sure we play in the best basketball we can to to get to the real basketball yeah does it affect your preparation for the playoffs at all with the the playing tournament where you don't know who you're going to play until like the last minute no nah. take anybody yeah not really what, what about the uh the in-season tournament did you guys like when they announced the in-season tournament uh, did you care about it? And then once you started playing in it, did your level of how much you care about the in-season tournament change? Yeah, when they first announced, I was like, "What is this?" Like, it, but it was actually pretty fun. Like mm-hmm. that game against Indiana that we lost at Indiana. Like, Indiana has never been that loud before. Like, yeah, in the games I played there, and um, like it was just a, a different, different level. So I, I think it was a success, and it was a lot of fun, and. Um, I think they did a good job with it. It's going to just be around forever now. Yeah, yeah, people are pumped. Yeah, We actually have a colleague here, Mark Titus, that um, has a great idea for how to switch up the NBA a little bit, make things more exciting. Uh, one night per year, there is one breakable basketball goal mm. that you can like shatter the backboard at, but they don't tell you where it is. But it's just in some arena somewhere in the league. Yeah. Do you think that would get the guys pumped up? You, yeah. It depends on like <laughs> it could be like a basic one. dunk and <laughs> nobody like if it's a basic dunk and the backboard breaks then you're just like ah oh, that is, I, that I would be a letdown it. yeah you're right it would have to be a good dunk that yeah. broke it yeah have you guys ever broken a backboard or a rim no just let nerf one yeah yeah, yeah. that counts that's that gotta counts. be a great feeling though if you if you're able to shatter one yeah Hank before I ask my last question do you have any other questions no that was it I was gonna talk about the uh, the fashion questions I feel like it's it's you, JB, and, and Tatum are always are always going going for it, and then some guys, you know, Derek and, and Horford just roll up in like their normal normal fits. Yeah, yeah. time to Drew. Time well. Drew comes with some good yeah, outfits. Drew. Yeah, KP, he's so tall, but he always rocks the you know the where's the rolls it out. Yeah. Oh, he he got a little style. He's wearing suits to games for you yeah. in there. So have there ever been any misses where some guy wears something that he thinks is going to look really awesome, and then you guys just all clown him? I mean, I've definitely missed my time. I oh. look back at some of my old outfits, and I'm like, "What the heck?" I'm gonna look it up. Right yeah, now did, did the well, boys- Drake? <laughs> what was it? What, what, what was the what was the locker room after that when when Drake was oh, chirping yeah. you? Well, I didn't know it's, whether to take it as a compliment or was he trying to diss me. But I mean, in the, the day, it's, Drake was saying something about me, so I was like, well, "Whatever, it's a compliment." <laughs> uh, all right, last question, rowback question, r h o b a c k dot com. Promo code TAKE, 20% off your first purchase. Q-zips, polos, hoodies, joggers, shorts, everything, rowback.com, promo code TAKE. Uh, do you guys want to guarantee a title? It would help the podcast. And we've been very nice to you guys. We're going to put everything into it to win one. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
And what about you, Derek? You can guarantee. Yeah, I agree with what P said. Okay, so if I said you guys are going to win the title, guaranteed, would you agree with that? Won't be because of a lack of effort. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> so it's halfway there. If you don't win a title, will how dis how disappointing of a season is that? It would definitely be disappointing. That kind of sucks though. Like I I I know that's the right mentality for a player to have, but you can have a great season. What are you, Giannis, right now? Yeah. No, I am. No, I'm like uh, Anthony Rendon. <laughs> like the game comes after faith and family. Yeah. Um. But like, if you have a great season and you don't win the title, you're like. Well, that was a waste of a year. To me, like, I, I don't have that mentality, which is probably why I'm not in the NBA, where I'd be like, yeah, uh, I had a lot of, I made a lot of friends this year yeah. in the league. Yeah. So it's not a, not I a had waste. a good time. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I would yeah, say it's a be, waste. Yeah. yeah. It wouldn't be a waste. It just writes, just makes the story better when we finally do do it. Yeah. That's true. And we, we got enough because we'll just do a quote that says, we're going to win the title guaranteed and then not for lack of effort in really small print. <laughs> and then it will say Peyton Pritchard in big print and then Big Cat in small print. Yeah, or it can so be you just like, have yeah. to figure out who said what. You'd be like, uh <laughs> just set me up. We're going <laughs> we're going to win the title this year. That's a guarantee. Dash PFT and Big Cat and then in big letters while they're interviewing Peyton Pritchard. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. us that say it. Like yeah. chances. <laughs> You're not adding Derek in there at all? Just, yeah. just Peyton. Yeah, just Peyton. I, I you fell for it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I yeah. had one last last question. Um, how awesome of a teammate was Blake Griffin? Because we love him. The He's best. the best. He's the best. Yeah. kind of our best friend. Like, yeah, was he? Us too. He, yeah. Why? Why isn't he? Why isn't he still play basketball? I don't know. We begged think, him to. I think the whole We've team been begging, been begging him, to. him to. Yeah, I'm come begging him to too. Boston. Like, come back to Boston, Blake. Do Have it. you guys still continue to beg him? I text him actually like a week or two, joking, they being like, coming back for one last ride. And what do he say? He says enjoying his life. Fuck, mm. I kind of want to Facetime him right now and make him go come back to basketball. Yeah, quit enjoying your life, Blake. I, yeah. But I, if I FaceTime him, he doesn't pick up. It would be disastrous for me. You should try. Right. I'll do one more question while you're doing that. Okay. Um, if there was a button that you could press and me. you win an NBA championship, but someone somewhere in the world dies, but you don't know who, do you press that button? I've seen this movie before. This is this then, is a, then they give that button to another person and then. Yeah, that that you got to be wary about the button. I remember that movie. I touched yeah. a vagina during that. Yeah, <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> This is a big movie oh, guy. he did pick up. Hey, these guys miss you. Why don't you Why don't you keep playing basketball? Is it because you can't dunk? Oh man, now I wish I hadn't picked up. <laughs> <laughs> come on, They're, they said that they, Peyton Pritchard said he 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 texted you like last week saying, "Come on back." Yeah, yeah, we talk, we talk, we talk quite a bit. <laughs> I'm uh. Just enjoying life right now, guys. <laughs> I told you. It's a bad answer. All right, fine. Well, uh, we, we got to get you back hey, on soon. I The question was, how how awesome is Blake Griffin as a teammate? And they said, the best. Oh, nice. Yeah. Appreciate that, guys. Yeah. You're welcome. I'll it, demo you later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we, we, hey, Blake, I got a, one more question for you. Do you guarantee the Boston Celtics win an NBA championship this year? I think, yeah, they're my favorites. Okay. Okay, so yeah. He said, was, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll end the sentence after, yeah. I don't guarantee you I won't put bad juju on them, but yeah, they're, they're, they're the heavy favorites in my mind. Okay, so why don't you why don't you come back and, and win a ring? Oh, man. <laughs> is, it, is, it the not, is it the not dunking thing? Because we, we can tell everyone you can still dunk. If you get that out there and enough people start tweeting about it, then maybe I'll come back. All right, no All problem. Right. We will do that. You can still dunk. <laughs> All right, bye, Blake. Thank you for picking up. All right. All right. Did you ever hear anybody yell at Blake, like, congrats on winning Blake of the Year to him? Oh, my God. All the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All the time. Pretty much every game. <laughs> Blake of the Year, Blake oh. of the Year. Oh. Our fans are the best, but they they can sometimes take things too far. <laughs> we had that with Max Homa, who yeah. we had to get them to stop yelling at him, homosexual. No, no, every, pervert. Pervert. He, we don't we say that anymore. Him a pervert. So that was our fault. Because we called him a parvert, and yeah. then everyone's like, oh, you're a pervert. No, it didn't work out that way. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, Derek, Peyton, thank you so much. Best of luck the rest of the season. Hopefully you guys win it all. Otherwise, Hank's going to have to get that soul patch. So, Right, Hank? We got it. Okay. And oh, if, if you do, shaved head. Yeah. 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 All right. Thanks, guys. Derek White and Peyton Pritchard were brought to you by Proper Number 12 Irish Whiskey. They've also got crisp and fresh Proper Number 12 Irish Apple. Great sipping whiskey. Good to pass a bottle around. Good to have on ice. Good to have neat. Good to have anyway. The Irish <laughs> Apple is elite, and the standard Number 12 Irish Whiskey is also awesome. Great on the golf course, too. We had a bottle not too long ago that we took out on the course. Great to sip some Irish whiskey 
out with the boys. It was founded by Conor McGregor. Shoot your shot of proper number 12 Irish whiskey today. <coughs> Pour the roar. Open your bottle and order it on whis- order your whiskey on Drizzly. Check it out. It's number 12 Irish whiskey with Drizzly. Okay, we have two Monday readings. Um, one is Meme sent us a story from Reddit. I want to do that second. The first one I wanted to share with you, PFT, uh, from the people that brought you Travis Kelsey inventing the fade. Mm -hmm. We have a new phenomenon, uh, thanks to Taylor Swift fans. It was a headline that reads, Taylor Swift fans drive, drive, excuse me, Taylor Swift fans drive new travel trend of gig tripping. Okay. How does it work? Can I guess? You could take a guess, but you will be wrong. Okay, so if you're a fan of Taylor Swift and you want to go see her perform in concert, yes. but her concert is not in your hometown, yes. then you would make a trip to go see her play her concert somewhere else. Kind of. Okay. Uh, gig tripping, this is from the article, gig tripping combines travel with music with people willing to merge vacation plans with a music event. Okay. This has literally I've, never been I've done. never heard of this. So you, you like take a vacation and your vacation is... Going to a different city and seeing a concert. Correct. Okay. Now, am I am I full disclosure slightly triggered by this? Uh, being a Grateful Dead and, and Fish fan, maybe. But gig tripping mm-hmm. has been invented by Taylor Swift fans. Uh, according to Skyscanner, forty four percent of Americans are willing to fly short haul to see their favorite artists, while eighteen percent would go the extra mile with long haul flights. And it goes on to say. With kids and adults alike looking for Swift tickets, travel company Travel Mation is seeing an increase in gig tripping requests. Uh, I just booked a family on a European trip built entirely around Taylor Swift. This is literally what hippies have been doing for wow. They just had decades and had decades band. and decades and decades. Gig tripping is one of the hottest trends in travel, and much of it is thanks to Taylor Swift. Mm-hmm. She's creating an industry, yeah. Adam Duckworth, president and founder of Travel Mation, said, We have clients booking trips all over the world to see her. Gone are the days where people see their favorite artists at the local venue. Gone. Gone. People don't do that anymore. Usually it was just if, you're, if your favorite band is playing within 20 miles from you, you go. Otherwise, never. I have seen some of those clips of people on planes, and they're all going to the Taylor Swift concert. Yes. And that, I would rather be on a plane with 75 maxes. I, housing, like, what is that, 150 sodas? I would much rather be on a plane like that than a plane of Taylor Swift. I'd rather be on a plane with the pilot as Flacco the Eagle. Mm-hmm. Wow, well, sorry. Yeah. Apologies, Flacco people. Uh, they're willing to travel as far as necessary to experience these high-energy shows. Uh, and it goes on and on and tells you how gig tripping is now a thing thanks to Taylor Swift. Fans are traveling to see Taylor Swift. Multiple concerts. Yeah. Never been done. Like, I saw that she was performing, but it's in a city that I don't live in. There's got to be a way for us to get there. I, I can't believe this is a real story that a uh, travel mation guy did. Was he, he was, he literally just woke up yesterday. Like, he was born yesterday. Oh, no, no. Travel mation guy, this is his business. Yeah. He sells these trips. And so he's like, this is a great news story. And then he found some reporter that needed to fill copy. Yeah. So, like, I've got a great, I got a scoop for you. Um, my business is doing very well. Would you like to write about it? Oh, it's a good scoop. I was I was reading this as the Arthur meme, just shaking my fist. Very mad. Like, God damn it. She invented everything. Well, no, Mincy actually invented gig tripping. That's true. That's true. In two ways. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, all right. Here's uh, Monday reading number two. This is from memes. Boyfriend 28 male keeps sneaking plastic food onto my 25 female plate. <laughs> okay. So we've been. I'm, I can already tell you, I'm on the guy's side of this. Yeah. Thing. So we've been together 14 months, and he's a great partner overall. He has a stable, respectable career that he enjoys. Nutritionist. He's very caring in most ways. Well, I didn't even. I I skim this. The fact that he's a nutritionist makes it even funnier. Uh, and he's doing this. He's very caring in most ways, and we have similar goals for our lives. But he's got an odd sense of humor sometimes, especially about one particular thing. He has access to a seemingly unlimited supply of plastic foods, and he keeps sneaking them onto my plate at meals. I saw the humor in it the first time. Plastic scoop of cottage cheese replaced my real cottage cheese at breakfast, but I have lost count of the number of times he's played this prank on me. There have been plastic turkey slices on a sandwich, a plastic chicken tender coated in buffalo sauce at a restaurant. 
You sneak it onto her plate. This guy's awesome. <laughs> Even a plastic deviled egg swap at my friend's wedding. I, I, okay, uh, so I without seeing the plates of food, I kind of have to blame her. Yeah. If you're this easily trickable, yeah. like what are you, a Labrador this, retriever? This is this is a trick that you could play in your dog quite successfully on your girlfriend who's what, twenty five years old? Twenty five, female. I, I'm questioning her eyesight. The sandwich is the only one I'll have her back. Sandwich is if tough. you slip something in a yep. sandwich, that's kind of fucked up. Yep, it would be. Yeah. All right. But I think the one that irritated me the most was when he wrapped a real banana skin around a plastic banana and put it back with the rest of the bunch on my counter. He says he just means it as a little joke when I've asked him to stop, but I'm getting paranoid <laughs> when I eat with him. What if he takes it too far and I choke on a fake cheese cube? The weirdest thing is, I don't know where he gets these. As I've seen his bank statements, there's no indicator he's buying them himself. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is go deeper into his bank statements and don't look for like prank things that he's purchasing at like a, a joke store. The man has a 3D printer. Yeah. He well, bought it, he I think he bought a 3D printer just to fuck with you. Not only that, but you kind of said it at the beginning he's a nutritionist. Isn't he probably making videos where he's like this is what you shouldn't eat? He might be, but if it's plastic again, with a banana, he put a fake banana in a real peel and you saw it and you were like, "Oh, this looks like Yeah, a, this is I agree with you. It, it's got to be you got to pay more attention to your food. Also, I I'm a I like this guy because he he knows the art of comedy. He knows that it's it's funny the first time, then it's not funny for a really really long time, but it will get funny again. It gets funnier the less funny that it gets. Yeah, that he's still doing it. Yeah, and and if he it makes him laugh, isn't that like what are you gonna stop him from from finding joy? I really think he got a three D printer and he's just he's printing up fruit all day yeah. long. Hey, which, he, which is awesome. He could be printing guns. Yeah, it's true. So he's just. This is actually a good thing. Is it illegal for guys to have hobbies anymore? No, I mean, apparently it is. Apparently it is. I want to do that with Hank except for weed. This guy rocks. Give him a bunch of fake nugs. We could get Hank. To, Hank would just power through a fake, like, chicken tender. Yeah, Hank doesn't pay attention. By the way, we, we tested some new stuff for Pardon My Cheese Steak. On, you, you had to leave. You had to do your stream. But uh, the new, we have some new menu items that are going to come out. They're going to be incredible. One of them was a buffalo chicken tender sub. It had zero heat. No, it's hot. No, Hank, I, no, I tried. I tried Hank, all these Hank things. Hank cr like cried. Yeah, he it, was. It, he it was, was like, not, it's so hot. It was not spicy at all. And I had to tell the chef, I was like, he cannot be the person who decides whether something's spicy. It was a perfectly normal, <laughs> like buffalo sauce. That yeah, was perfect. Hot. hot. <laughs> Too hot. My mouth is still recovering. Still recovering. How was golf today? What did you guys shoot? We had, we played golf today. Yeah, how did you shoot? Yeah. No, we we shot. In February in Chicago. Golf. Yeah, but how did you guys shoot? We played golf most. today. So what was the scores? Shot, shot a shot, shot another shot after. Hundreds? Oh, yeah. Jake, what were the scores? 99 for me, 105 for Hank, 113 for PFT. Okay, that's it fine. It was a tough day. Fine. I had fine. like four good shots. That's fine. I I came to the realization today that um like I used to hate water on a golf course. Now I like water because at least it's not trees. Yeah. When you hit into the trees, then that's that might as well be a three stroke penalty. You gotta go trying fake to get it out. Look for it. That's yeah, you just gotta just drop it. And yeah. Just, like found it. They also shut off the water fountains. Oh yeah. The whole course. Yeah. Well, yeah, because it's February. I almost passed well, out. It was tough. Well, they yeah. shut them off for the winter. Yeah, but if the course is open, they should. They don't just. They're not like, oh, it's a warm day. Let me turn it back on. It's like. I'm yeah. yeah. I tell you what. Um, you know who pees a lot on the golf course is Jake. No duh. Jake's a big peer. No duh. Like, uh, whole three. Every illegal. Three holes, every Wait, you're showing holes. your penis out outside? And there were some. There were some children. Of course there were. Yeah. He only. He said he's gun shy unless it's a, a child around. <laughs> he can only pee when a child's around. Uh, okay. Good show, boys. Good show. Uh, let's do some numbers. Forty. Eight. Eighteen. Twenty. <laughs> Eighty-eight for Patrick Kane. Three. Ninety-nine pug. Pug, by the way, is becoming like a cult classic. Oh, Pug's the best. People love Pug. We were playing Pug before we broadcasted tonight, and uh, if you're wondering what Pug is, it's exactly like horse, but you spell Pug. Love it. And uh, he's got the most hilarious shots that he invents. Yeah. He was doing like hop twice off your left foot and then shoot with your right hand, and it, it was it was incredible. Get crossed over by Gia. Yeah. <laughs> we get creative, Pug. <laughs> I, people just love Bug. He's he's perfect. Shane, did you say yours? Same. Shane, Same 
Share your, say your number. 21. There we go. What was your number, Max? 20. 20. 38. Ooh. 38. 38. All right, good show. We'll see everyone Wednesday. Love you guys.